and good morning and welcome to Sewing Street on this wonderful Monday morning. Oh, it's lighter, isn't it? I am so excited. I actually arrived today at six o'clock in the light, in the light, so life can only get better and there's daffodils out, which is wonderful, isn't it? So it just does feel a bit like spring's come. We've done Mother's Day, three weeks to Easter. I've worked out ages ago how you work out Easter, finally worked that out. But I didn't realise till yesterday, um, Mother's Day is all is always three weeks before Easter. And Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the vernal equinox. Hmm? No, no, it's much more interesting to do it that way. And Mother's Day is three weeks before Easter, so I've done all that. But anyway, it's lovely, lovely, lovely March day today, and we have got some fantastic things to celebrate that on air for you today. First of all, though, let's do the early bird. We've got some fantastic fabric for you. It's a pre-cut piece of this lovely neutral. I'm going to open it up. It's the normal width quilting fabric and the beautiful quality that we normally do. So it's 112 centimetres, 44 inches width, and it's two and a half metres pre-cut. Now these are pre-cut pieces. So if you bought two of them, you'd get two, two and a half metres. It wouldn't come as a five metre piece, but they are pre-cut. So that's what the whole thing looks like, two and a half metres. And it's lovely. What I like about it is it's just that really lovely neutral tone that's perfect for backing quilts, for lining things, for using as sashing and borders. Um, it's, but it's not just plain. So it's this sort of beigey, like a very rich vanilla ice cream colour. But it's got a texture to it. So if you look at it very closely... It's got, I'll put my glasses on, I can look at it even more closely. And oh, it's all got squares with little dots in. So it's got a really nice texture. So it has that more three dimensional look rather than a normal plain fabric. So it's just one of those really useful pieces of fabric to keep in your stash. Or if you've got something specific in mind for it, very good for backing a quilt, as I said. But also good for if you're doing a quilt where you've got um, some really bright colours. This looks really nice alongside it and it's just a bit softer and warmer than a white or an ivory. But perfect for lining things as well. Big piece. And whenever we do neutral bundles, people always love them. Always love them because I think we've all got, haven't we, so much fabric in our stashes of all different sorts of colours and things. And you often think, you know, you want it to go a bit further. So if you've got, you know, one of the more designer fabrics, the more expensive ones, and you don't want to use it all up in something, using a neutral tone like this will really help. And because it's this sort of rich, creamy colour, it will go um, with bright colours, it will go with greys, blacks, um, greens, blues, all sorts. So it's a stock fabric. I mean, it's printed in Japan, beautiful, 100% cotton. Um, and it is very, very good quality, but it's just really useful. So that's why we've done it for you as the early board. Oh, half the stock's gone. So that's why we've done it ooh, as the early bird today, because two and a half metres just is a really useful length that you can use for so many things. So that's our early bird. Oh, and if there's a lot of you with it in your baskets. Now, remember, once you get your basket open and you've checked out, your postage is done. The postage is three ninety five pounds per day. doesn't matter how much you buy, how many times you check out, it's always £3.95. So once you've got your early bird in your basket and you've checked out, your postage is covered. It's like free and pee for, pee for the rest of the day, really, then, isn't it? Uh, so that's the early bird. It is probably going to sell out. Yes, minutes, says Hannah, minutes. So get it in your basket and get it checked out. Um, now, I just wanted to let you know, the iron has been out of stock, but we've got it back. Now, we, this has been massively popular. You might think, why are they selling an iron? Because obviously nobody likes ironing. This isn't for ironing, this is for pressing. This is for when you're doing sewing. So this is pleasurable ironing. This isn't shirts and towels and socks and pants and tea towels and all those things. This is sewing. Obviously you can use it for normal ironing, but we have chosen this specially because it is ideal for your sewing projects because it's cordless. Now you can choose whether you have it on the cord or not. So you can just take it off. Look, completely cordless, walk around the house with it. Brilliant. So, you, you know, which is great. So if you're on your sewing machine, you haven't got a plug nearby, you don't want to have all that there. It's just much easier, it doesn't get in the way. And also when you're pressing and you want to be able to turn it around and get to different angles, you haven't got the cord in the way. But if you do want to, because it's rechargeable obviously, but if it runs out and you need to use the charge, you can, um, you can press the clip and then it comes out with its cord. Look at that, magic. It's 
Um, Hannah's just got a price comparison for us on the, this is a Beldre iron, on Beldre's very own website, it's $59.99. Wow. And ours is $29.99. What I like about it is it has a very, very sharp point at the front. Now, anyone who, obviously all of you who do so, know how important that is when you want to get into corners and when you want to press very small seam allowances, like your quarter inch seam allowance open, that very sharp point is really useful. It's got really good um, steam, it's got the whole sort of steam shot, you know, no steam, full steam, different, or like any normal iron. But because I think it's cordless and it's got this nice sharp point, it is perfect. So just use it for your sewing because nobody minds doing pressing when they're sewing. It's just that ironing we don't like, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to be covering this more at 11 o'clock. But because we've got it back in stock, I wanted to let you know. Because $29.99, that's fantastic. Because then you can have keep this one just for your sewing. You can use it for normal ironing, obviously, but it just doesn't seem so bad, doesn't it, when you're buying it for something pleasurable. So that's the iron. Shall we have a look at what we've got coming up today? We've got loads for you. So now, eight o'clock, we've got Claire from Native Lighting. She's got one brand new light today, which is very exciting, and lots of other lights we're gonna go through in detail because we've got lights and magnifiers which make a massive difference to your sewing anyway we're going to talk about that in a minute and meet claire nine o'clock we've got man cave fabric it sounds really odd doesn't it it's not men in caves it's um fabric that all to do with hobbies that could be male or female to be honest but it's things like darts and snooker but it's a whole fabric range called man cave fabric um 10 o'clock i oh that's me i'm on with amber makes um, Amy has designed, as part of Amber Makes, a beautiful stained glass sunrise panel. So the panel comes printed with the instructions and what I've focused on with this and in particular in the instructions is twin needling. So if you've never used a twin needle in your sewing machine, they are life changing, absolutely life changing. It's on pre-order already, so if you want to buy it, but it features a beautiful rainbow in a stained glass, the dove of peace with the olive branch and a cross. Um, in the kit you get the panel and all the instructions and I'm going to talk you through in the demo how to use a twin needle because honestly it is life changing. You can stitch beautifully neat parallel lines of stitching, it's amazing once you know how to do it. And I'm also going to talk you through binding in particular in mitering corners which is once you've shown it is really really easy but it's really helpful to be shown. So that's on at 10 o'clock. Um, 11 o'clock we've got sewing room tools and we have got loads of them including the iron so lots and lots of useful gadgets and bits and pieces that you need for your sewing that you know you need that will be great there's lo loads in that hour so it'll be a really really useful hour lots to learn lots to see um, 12 o'clock we've got yarn lane I am particularly excited about this I have one of the first um, things that the, the first kit that I ever bought my daughter was from Sincerely Louise and I've been talking to Sincerely Louise since we launched in November asking her to come on air because she does look at these the most beautiful beautiful knitted animal heads that you hang on your wall I've got one my daughter's got one and they are just gorgeous so if you want to buy um, Watch Yarn Lane, we're on straight after Sewing Street. If you're on the TV, you don't need to change channels. 12 o'clock, we'll go straight onto Yarn Lane. If you're watching on Facebook or online, you need to go on to www.yarnlane.com. The um, knitted animal heads, and we've got a whole variety of giant ones, and mini ones, they're on pre-order. If you want to buy them before the show, you need to go on to www.yarnlane.com or you can call the special Yarn Lane number, which is on screen now, 0800 4 700 600. Um, the P&P &P goes across Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, so if you buy anything on Sewing Street, then that covers your Yarn Lane purchase, so that's free purchase, really. Um, but you were, it's a really lovely show. If you like knitting and particularly chunky knitting and you want to make something interesting or you want just a bit of fun, I've got one of her animal heads hanging above <coughs> my kitchen door. It's gorgeous. So that's going to be a great show. You'll love that. Um, let me just show you about shopping on Sewing Street. So if you want to buy with us, the easiest way to do it, the two ways to do it, but this is probably the easiest, is you go on to sewing, www.sewingstreet.com. Look, there it is there. You click on watch live, that's me in the corner, 
and then scroll down and everything that we've got on the show today is below. So everything that we've shown will be on today's show deal. So everything that's already be on our air is on today's show deals. Everything that's going to be on air so that we've put on pre-order is below that. So to get to pre-order, you click on the word pre-order. It's magic, isn't it? So you just do today's, if things that have been on, because the only thing we've done so far is the fabric, today's show deals. But if you want to get ahead and you don't want to miss out, if you you know that like we've got the man cave fabrics that are going to be really popular and you think, oh, I'm not going to be in at 10.30. So say you want the stained glass panel and you think, oh, I'm not going to be here at 10. You can go and get it on pre-order and then you don't need to miss out. So you just click on there, add to basket, but don't forget you need to check out. I think that's sometimes something we forget. It's like being in the supermarket. If you leave your basket outside the toilet, people can take things out of it. And it's exactly the same on Sewing Street. <laughs> Alice says people don't. They do. They do. If you've got something nice in there that's about to sell out. So if you've got it on your basket, you do need to check out and then it is yours. Right, so anyway, that's what's happening today. So don't go anywhere because it's we've got lots and lots of different things for all sorts of interests and skills and abilities and everything. But we're talking about lighting, which is very important. So let's say hello to Claire. Good morning, Claire. Good morning. Lovely to see you again. Now, I haven't worked with you before. No, I think you're the last presenter then. Oh, going to be everybody then. Lucky <laughs> lies. Great. I'm really excited by this because I was saying to Claire earlier that when I'm at home, I have to say to my husband, can I have the big light on? Because yeah. I can't see. <laughs> yeah. He goes, can you turn? that off and go, I'm just doing a bit of embroidery I need to see so lighting is so important it is it, it really is important and um, it's funny that something that you just mentioned we've done quite a lot of research at shows with a lot of ladies and that was one of the key things that used to come out can can you have a light where it just focuses mm. on the work that I'm doing and it doesn't affect the TV <laughs> and everybody else yeah. in the room so that's one of the key things that we've taken into account when we've had all these lights designed. So, uh, we and also that big light isn't ever good enough anyway, is no, it? No, because it's, it's normally not daylight, which no. is what you use when you're obviously working on tasks mm. and you're matching colours and things like that. Because light's measured in temperatures and um, normally you'd have what's called like a warm light, which is more sort of ambient for the home and things yes, like that. Sort of orangey, or, isn't yeah, it? Yes, or more like a yellow sort of style mm. light really. So what's your background? How did you get into lighting? So I've been in the lighting industry for 10 years. Wow. I worked for um, a, a lighting company that sold task lighting and magnification mm. in the past. Then I got headhunted by a commercial lighting company and went to work for them for 18 months. Really didn't enjoy it. Um, you weren't really sort of dealing with end users. It was more architects and specifiers, oh, okay. so a lot more corporate really. Right. And I really just missed that, you know, interaction with users mm. of the lights and things like that. Real people. Real then. people, <laughs> yeah. People that you can get access to whereas yes. obviously you know it was type of lights that were going to be put inside houses and, and you know big new buildings and construction mm. and things like that so didn't enjoy that as much um, then I started working with a Scandinavian company who wanted to start working in the UK and I said look I'd really like to set up my own lighting company mm. and maybe we can work together with the design and side like that so that's how Native then wow. came alive so. and so who do you sell to who else use your lights other than all of us lovely crafters so people like beauticians use them, okay. people that do lots of electronics work, people that have got low vision that need to help with reading and things like that. Right, but okay. Basically. So older people who can't see as well like <laughs> me then. That's yeah. what I needed. Yeah. But, but people with vision problems. Yes. Because it, with the magnification. Yeah, and also a lot of people sometimes sort of have to stop doing things that they love because they just say they can't see. Oh, and loads of people. I've worked for lots of cross-stitch magazines and a lot of people say, I've given up cross-stitch because I can't see. Yeah, anymore. and then once they they don't always need a magnifier. Sometimes they just need a really good quality light yeah. that gives them the actual daylight simulation. Be good for tatting. We do a lot of needle. We do needle tatting now on Yarn Lane. Ah, okay. And that is very fine. And a lot of people have said, "Oh, I can't do that anymore because I can't, can't see, see it." So, yep, yeah, they need to get a native light. Then they probably can carry. And model on. making as well. Yeah, model making. So um, that's a big thing. People that do miniature painting and people that do puzzles, very okay. small images and things like that, trying to match them. So, so many different things that the because it isn't can be just about the lighting; for. it's the magnification yes. as well. The two yes. that, but they sort of run together, don't they? Yes, they. Yeah. Yes, definitely they do. But so. what I like about these lights is they're quite stylish as well because a lot of 
task lighting is a bit ugly, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's just, we've sort of revolutionised it a little bit, really. Mm. I think it's been out there for, for quite a long time. And right. I think people sometimes just think, oh, we'll just get a new light, just get a new light. But we've actually stopped and think, uh, thought, sorry, about what mm. people actually need. And one main thing was people used to say, we need to get the light where we need it. So that's where our gooseneck yeah. came so from. So your standard lamp in the corner of your room is no good, yeah, is it? because you can't bring that light down <laughs> no. to your task. So our designs have got the very bendy goosenecks, which are quite long, mm. so it means that you can direct the light exactly where you need it and on your project. Yeah, because I quite often, if I need to choose particularly stranded cotton colours, I think, well, I'll do that in the daytime so I can yeah. use it in the evening. Yeah, That's exactly. really annoying. Yeah. Or I'll have to go out to the kitchen. Yep. 100% and people will say um, no more sort of putting things up to the window and matching anymore mm. once they've got a light. Well that's what I've always done in it and sometimes then I'll choose it and I'll look in the next day and think oh god that's a completely a different, different colour isn't yeah. it? Yeah <gasps> so our, our actual lights give you the same type of light as if you were outside at noon on a sunny day. Oh okay so Perfect. that's how we sort of compare that. So you've got a new light for We us have today. today we've got the zigzag. Now this um, really is stylish. Yes so it's a very small little lamp here and this is the only rechargeable light we have today yeah and we do have other ones and they are on on the website so good for mobile Traveling. homes yeah Traveling. so many so so many things really Workshops. so yeah because obviously it's very difficult sometimes when you go to the church halls to find plugs yes so you can you yeah. can, can take a battery pack as well although it, you can charge it up so if you want to obviously you're going to be all day mm. or longer and things like that so when it's fully charged um you get eight four hours if you've got it on the highest setting and then eight hours if you have it on one okay. of the lower so settings. that's fine for a workshop or something but yeah. it's lovely isn't it you know if you're going on holiday or, you in the, know, yeah, car, just, on the train, on a plane, perfect. when we can get to travel again to still be able to. It doesn't even look to. like a light. I know. So it's really nice. It's and handbag size. Handbag size. Mm, or if important. you've got sewing bags, machine, yes. the bags that the machines go in, it will slot into you could one actually of the just pockets. keep that in your, with your machine. Yeah, you? exactly. So you open it up and like that. It's very sort of slate metallic, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. I think it might say it's black on I know, there. It's but it not isn't, actually black. It's, it's black. more, I'd say it's like a bronzy, it's a difficult colour to, to actually yeah. assess, actually. And then you, you've got the height there, mm. so you raise it oh, up. Oh, so you can choose. Yeah. And then you, it angles backwards and forwards. So nice. make it work, obviously, wherever you need your mm. light. And this one goes up and down as so well. It's very adjustable. Very then. flexible. And then you've got your on and off button here. So you just tap it and then it goes on. Let's put that on there. And it's got three brightness levels. Okay. So again, you just tap it three times and then you get it to the brightest one yeah. as well there. So to turn it on and off, you just keep your finger on it very gently. But to get the brightness, you just tap it as well. Oh, okay. Because it's sometimes you need it, you don't want it full brightness. You think no, you want some people it. want it, depending on their eyes as well, what, what sort of like level of light they want. Mm. So it also comes with a little charging cable, so a little micro USB oh, charging okay. cable. So you just plug this end either into a, a laptop, a computer, oh, um, okay. a plug that so you get. So you could have it on your desk at work yeah. as well, couldn't you? Yeah, definitely. Or you have it with um, a pa battery pack mm. as well and things like that. So that, that, com that comes with it. So so you could plug it into one of those battery packs you have for a phone? Yes, oh, yes, okay. I, that's what I tend to use. But the other thing about this particular one is um, a lot of the lamps that are on the market at the moment that are um, bent down like this, they have the on and off button on the outside. <laughs> So then it goes into your bag and then it turns on and then you get to wherever you want to and use it and then you've lost all your charge. Ah. So when we designed this one, we, sorry, I didn't turn it off, but we just um, thought, right, okay, we need to seriously think about where that button that goes. That really makes sense. And so that button is on the inside there. So as you say, perfect in your pocket. Um, I know a lot of people use these in restaurants. They oh. say that like when you go and you can't read because so nicely lit, romantically lit, yeah. they can't read their menus yes, and absolutely. things like that. So they always take that along and then have that. Oh, that's up. really useful because it is so small as well. It, you know, but I like the way it, it comes out that you could. I mean, you could use it as a bedside lamp if you're in a hotel. So many, so many uses for it really as well. And so is it only being sold on Sewing Street? It's not being sold in that very many places, mm -hmm. to be honest, at the moment. Okay. But it has been in the market for a little while. But right. um, Sewing Street decided that they really liked it and wanted it to It is a really nice thing. That. I think because it's multi-purpose. And obviously, you know, we're all crafters. We 
probably going to use it for a craft, yeah. but it doesn't have to be just that, does it? No, so many, so many uses. Reading as well, that, that's another thing. Yes. I think a lot of people sort of think, oh, I can't, I can't read, it's, it's my eyes hurt. Mm. And what you do find is if you start to use a good quality light, then you can do whatever you love, reading, crafting, uh, for much longer and much more comfort as well. So can you unfold it again, Justin? Yeah. To... So we just unfold it. Because you want to have another look, haven't you? <laughs> It's not flimsy at all either, is it? No, it's metal. Yeah, so it's, cause it's, it's metal. It, yeah, because it's, it, it's obviously it's yeah, a metal lamp. Yeah, it is beautiful. And there we go. And then just pop and it on. And it's what? So four hours on full light? Four or eight hours, hours on, on charge. Yeah. You've got it on, on the brightest light and then eight hours if you've mm. got it on the lowest setting. A lot of people who are setting up home offices in the garden shed yeah. or in the corner of their bedroom or whatever, it's yeah. perfect for that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because sometimes people don't want a huge light. And also, no. you know, a lot of people that are working from home at the moment, are, you know, probably working with a laptop and don't want a huge light mm. clamped on the desk. But this is so nice, they can just pop it down, put it away and put it in a drawer with, with sort of like the laptop. Mm. And then, because a lot of people are using like the dining room table or their oh. kitchen table <laughs> yeah. and want, you know, to be able to pop things away nice and, and neatly. Yes, and that's because because you're, yeah, because then you've got to have your dinner. Yeah, so you exactly. need to be able to put it away. Yeah. And it is a real issue with lighting because at the end of the day, if you're working all day, particularly at home, and you haven't got the right, yeah. you haven't got office lighting, your eyes can really hurt. Exactly, yeah. And obviously, we're spending a lot of time on screens mm. and things. And I think when people work from home, they tend to probably work more than they would if they'd been in the office as yes, well. Yes, sure so. do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you just do, don't you? Yeah, you can. It's, it, it's easy, isn't it? <laughs> but then it's really useful. I'm thinking, like, you know, in the kitchen when you're cooking and you're trying to read a recipe yeah, yeah and then you know you could just get that out and put it on the work surface and yeah. it's there isn't it yeah so yeah so it's 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 a, it's, a lot, it's one of our favorite lamps actually <laughs> yeah it is really one that nice we, that we love because it just looks so stylish brand new and, uh, yeah brand new to sewing street so it's the only rechargeable option that we've got today and it's brand new 49.99 what a fantastic thing and it comes with this little charger comes cable. with a little cable yeah that we've got here as well it's a little okay cute. perfect <laughs> Right, so we will come back to it. So if you want the brand new light, you need to put it in your basket and check out because the stocks will be limited because whenever we do a brand new light from Claire, it's always really, really popular. So I think that's a fantastic price as well for what you get for it and how useful it is and so many things. And it's really good quality as well, Yeah, which is nice, isn't it? So which one should we do? We've got loads of other lights, loads of other lights. Let's do the big magnifier because that's magnifier. the one that I'm quite excited by. Because <laughs> okay. um, I was saying to Claire how I've bought myself some really cheap, very strong glasses, but they make me, oh, I can't, if it's... Mm. So remember with this one, um, it's on split pay. Now, when um, Claire came in last, which was before for our birthday, which when we launched the new split pay, well, you couldn't buy this on split pay because split pay was 149. Ah. But now split pay is available on products that are 99 pounds or more. So with this light, because this is 137.99, we can split it over two equal payments. So you pay 68.99 today and we'll send it out to you straight away. You haven't got to wait. And then you'll pay 68.99 next month, but there's no interest on that. We're not charging you an extra, it's up to you. You can pay for it all in one go, or just to make it easier with no interest, you can pay 68.99 now and 68.99 later but you don't you will get sent it straight away you haven't got to wait for the end of the two months now i love this because i was saying that i've got some really strong cheap glasses so that yeah. i can see very detailed but then as soon as i look up i feel really dizzy, feel a bit but, dizzy. Awful. but yeah. this is perfect i need one of these yeah so this is a seven inch magnifier so okay. this is this is quite a quite a big big magnifier so if you've got um, it's a big desk or you're working on sort of a big project, then right. that, this is this is perfect for mm. that. So it comes with a cover to obviously protect the lens when, when you're not using it. So that you just pop pop that off okay. there. And the other thing to mention is about the reach of the magnifier because it just goes so far. So you, if you've got a big desk there, you can see. Okay. You can, you, you, and so then, that clamps onto a table. So you could have that, if you were even sat on the sofa, you could have it clamped on a side table, but it would reach quite a long way. Yeah, you obviously it's, obviously this is quite heavy. So yes. you'd need to make sure that it Your was side quite table a weighty wasn't a table. Flimsy yeah, if, and then obviously, but so just to obviously be a bit careful mm. with that if you were gonna put it onto something. But yeah, so there's that as well. So obviously, and then when you're not using it, you know, you can you can put it down quite yes. flat like that. So it's out it's out the way as well. So you've got the on button at the top here. So you just switch that on there. Mm. 
And then you've got on the front here two controls. You've got a little eye and then you've got like a little sunshine. So the eye is where you just tap it and you just get the different colours. Oh, is the way I tap it. I think you're doing everything from behind. Yeah, it's because you've got nice nails. <laughs> worked for me fine. So I've got it did on. work for you. There you go. So I've got beautifully <laughs> manicured fingers. So you can see you've got your d different colours. You've got your daylight, warm light and cool light there. Okay. Because it's changing. And then each colour has got three brightness levels. So you just tap as well. So you've got well. three colours and three brightness levels. And three brightness levels. levels. Wow. So you've got nine. Which is lovely, isn't it? Because for different times of the day and yeah. different projects, you need different amounts. So obviously the daylight is what we would recommend if you're mm. colour matching and you're working with the really tiny details because obviously that's really good for um, working with the intricate details and things like that. Yeah, can you move it over a bit? Yeah. So it's... That way. Right, there are now only single figures left of this. I think a lot of you are taking advantage of the fact that it's the first time that we've got it on split pay. Um, to be able to get it on the 68.49 over two months, it just makes it that bit more affordable. And, and I'm thinking, you know, obviously you could use it when you're sitting on the sofa, but mm. using it actually while you're working, whether that's craft or making models, or yeah. that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%, or reading. People yes, that sometimes yeah. you know need some help with the with the with the words popping out as well. So the magnification on it is one point seven five times. Right. So that obviously gives you a, a really nice uh, level of magnification when you're working with it, really. So if I just pop underneath, I've got some tiny little beads here. Um, if I just pop them underneath, then you can see how Whoa. much that magnifies those. There. Oh, does that make needle threading easier? Yeah. So much. So if I just come back out there, you can hardly... Oh, yes, I was trying to thread it. I wanted a very fine needle because I was sewing some slip stitching a seam, which were yeah. tiny stitches. And I gave up because I, I couldn't actually thread the needle I wanted to use. Mm. So I had to use a bigger needle, yeah. which wasn't as good because I couldn't thread it. But if I'd had one of these... Then you would have been fine. Mm. So when I come out there, it's really difficult to even see them in my yes, hand. They're is. so yeah. tiny. And then once you're under the magnifier, it just really, really shows how, oh, I need how well it magnifies. I don't think my glasses even <laughs> strong enough. You've also got a wing nut on the top here, which you can then, you can twist it oh. and angle it. And if, say you wanted to light something up for photography oh, and things really, like yeah, that. So that's like a ring light. So which you, we'll yeah, to you've later. got, but it is like, a, so you could use it for that sort of thing as well. Yeah. So yeah, you just, wherever you want to position, you just loosen the wing nut and then obviously you just position and it And I think it's however. a shame because I think there are a lot of people who give up on crafts and I know a lot of people have said, well, I've, I've given up cross stitch so I've started doing, say, knitting instead or I stopped doing this and I'm doing that. I, you know, yeah. it's like I used to do a lot of cross stitch or embroidery on very, very fine fabric, which I don't tend to now because no. it's just too hard work. But actually, and this what sort we, of... Yeah. Take, gives you your craft back. Yeah, 100%. And that's what we used to find. That the, I used to go to the exhibitions a lot. Mm. And that's where I sort of like did a lot of my research with what people needed. Yeah. And that was one of the, I used to say to them, you know, have a go with the magnifier. You know, it might not be that you need a magnifier. And then they'd say, well, oh, actually, no, I find that a bit difficult to see. And then I'd say, well, just now try with the light. And sometimes they'd be like, well, actually, I think my light might be enough. And then, yeah. then it's then just letting them have a go and, and try with things. And then they obviously Well, also, out. you might be that you only... You don't need the magnifier all the time, but there are yes. certain times when you do, and then you can just put the cover on. Depending on what you're it. working so on. So it's very really. multi-purpose. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and also, you know, maybe you've got a partner who does model making. Yeah, so you can share it. Mm. Yeah, lots of ladies say they have to get another one because they've been stolen by their husband. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see his crossword. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Now we are we have only got six left in stock because there are a lot of you who are using the split pay, which is fantastic because it just makes it more accessible if you want to have this but split it over two. Um, then, but don't forget you will get it sent straight away. But if you want it, you need to get it in your basket and check out. Yes, and check out. You don't, but you don't have to do it on split pay. It's not compulsory. You can get you get to choose that if you want to buy it all out outright. You can. So should we move on to the gooseneck? I yes, love this so one. the Lumina. Um, I've got a white one and you've got you've a got black one. You've got a white one, one and I've, and I've Very got stylish. a black one. Very stylish. So I've got the white one. They're the same price. Yeah. No matter what colour. So this is the white one. I love the fact that it really is very flexible. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah. That's that's. 
as I said, when we spoke to lots of ladies, it was like, we need to get the light where we need it and not to be affecting other people. So that's yeah. where So if you're from. sitting down, you know, you can have it coming from above. Yeah, you can have it coming from above. A lot of that's how a lot of people work with it, really. So, if you need the length, you've got the length where yeah. you you can wrap it round a sewing machine. It's really oh, yes. good round now, a sewing I did machine. Have, should we do that? Yeah, we'll do that. So I can just show you how this works. So if we just get a normal sewing machine, not a super fancy one, just a normal one. And you know, sometimes maybe you're just threading the needle. If you like me, my needle thread didn't seem to work on my machine at the moment. You know, you can just get it in really close just to be able to see that. Or if you just find, you know, you're struggling to see maybe the um, the stitch, the seam guides on here and you want to see, oh yeah, let me turn it on. So the power it, button's at the top. At the top. So you get you get um, the controls actually on the lamp, and then you get a remote control. I'll probably find as it's well. not. No, the, the reason it's not working. That one's not plugged in. It's not actually plugged in. But <laughs> okay. Yours is. So we Mine's can show you Claire's in. plugged in because <laughs> mine doesn't seem to be. Um, but you can then angle it exactly where you want. So so maybe you're on your sewing machine and you just need a bit of light to see the markings on the um, the stitch plate or something, or you need it because you're cutting something. You can move it around. So it's a really useful thing. Have it on your desk next to where you're working and then you or you know you think well I don't need it now you can just move it out of the way but it is so flexible but it's nice that you know you can bend it yeah a few times so you exactly so you have on the want. on the pole you've got um, your controls here so you've got a power a power yes. button there and then you've well, got you underneath it where it says color it's got five different colors so right. you've got the uh, daylight warm light cool light and then you've got a couple of other ones in between there. So as you, you can touch those on there and you can see that that's just changing colour as we go through that on that one. So you can see the colours changing on there. And then each colour setting change. has got five brightness levels. Wow. So that theoretically, this lamp gives you five different colour settings. Right. So that means there's always going to be a light that suits your eyes when you've got a choice of 25 colours yeah, on that, that one. So you're always going to find... I know, sometimes you don't always want the daylight. You think, oh, this is a daylight lamp. Yes. You might not always want that. Again, depending oh, on mine works now. going on, on outside as well. Mm. So if you don't need all the length, like you were just doing before, you can just put a knot in it. Yeah. <laughs> Put a knot in it and uh, and then twist it to, to wherever. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, yeah. so you don't have to sort of think, oh, I'll come up Got high to have to the whole length. Down. Yep, just, just put a knot in it and then, you know, that's just over that area that i And I'm... does that, the gooseneck stay, it doesn't become weak? No, um, that's some, John, I think it's John that normally says about, normally sometimes you can feel it, the metal and the bendiness like in between Like a shower them. hose. Yes. When and and sort of... it's not, it's obviously we've had the design where we've obviously got the silicon over the top and it's not yes. it, it's a flexible one which isn't going to also lose and become floppy and then you just choose whether you want white or black oh difficult. yeah so then the remote control that comes with it <gasps> a remote control yeah oh wow so wow. you get that as well and that's got the on and off button it's got a couple oh, if you of you put it actually i think they're gonna yeah just put it on the facing towards you and then we can see it on the that's it that way there we go and mm -hmm. then you've got timer which is for 60 seconds and 10 minutes so say you're going to be have you've got it on a headboard or you've got it on your bedside cabinet oh, okay i'm only going to read for 10 minutes set the 10 minute timer and then the light goes out <laughs> when it's time to finish well that's a good idea so you've also got your brightness settings minus and plus your choice of colors on either side there then say you just think right okay i want only 50 percent light just hit the 50% button or the 100%. Which is quite useful if you're if you're holding something so and you don't want to be move, yeah. moving the controls, you can just press that. Also, another thing to, to point out is that it's a smart lamp. So it remembers the setting you like. How? So when you switch it back on, it'll it will be on the setting that you've you've set it at mm. as well. So that's that's another really good thing with it. You haven't got a sort of thing. Oh, which one did what I have it on oh, last okay. time? So it just goes back to what it was last time. So it, yeah, like and that. then to make sure that if you're working on the project that your colours are being mm. matched by exactly the same light that you were using before as well. That's brilliant. So what we're we're also going to do now is I've just bought another lamp in with me just to show the differences when yeah, no, you're that's working really useful, with colours. So I've just bought sort of like a basic lamp that you would buy from 
just you know any high street yes. str high street store and that's got like your normal what you were talking about before nice lamp. the big light uh <laughs> big light i should have bought lots of nice ones shouldn't i yeah. <laughs> nice lamp. and then obviously we're going to use my lamp which has got the daylight right. settings on and we've just got a couple of uh, pieces of material here just to show the difference really of, of how it really changes the color of the material oh gosh all right turn the lights off <laughs> they're completely different colors so obviously one's jade and one's blue yeah so this is um sort of like more of a, a turquoisey blue bluey color this material yeah and then the lamp here that i've got my hand on at the moment the way i've got my hand now this is the the one which is like more of a yellow light yeah and that's made it go green so yeah. if you're choosing thread colors yeah or you're trying to match fabrics and then this on then on here and that is that's the daylight real, and, and that is the real color and that's the more of the color the real color of, of the material that's so, amazing so isn't that's it? And, it, and it's very different on different colors as well so that's obviously oh, on like the green oh, wow. one and then if we do it on this is lovely lilac material oh completely different but if we go on here it's pink with yes. the with that warm but light but we all know don't we that we've worked on things in the evening and they have changed color the next day yeah you think i'm amazed at that i didn't realize it was that color yeah it's it, it it's it's quite a really big difference when when you actually look at that yeah and also and you know i guess when the nights are lighter it's a bit easier but it's particularly when the lights you know when it's limited yeah in the winter I mean, you a lot haven't of got as much time to choose. And sometimes, actually, you get all day the lights rubbish. E exactly. And a lot of people sort of say, "Well, do I need do I need a light during the summer months?" Well, mm. yes, you do really. You do actually. Because although it doesn't get dark till later, the light inside the house does yeah, change. It is as, as as it doesn't become so sunny and so mm. so much natural light in the house as well. Oh yeah, no. Even the summit makes quite a difference. And when yeah. you are choosing things, and it's a shame if you've chosen fabric and threads to go together, you've sewn it all up, and then you realise the colours wrong yes no so it's definitely. not just about light to work with it's about light yeah. to get the correct colour with yeah 100 percent. yeah definitely so mm. working outside yes <laughs> so which one are we doing next so the rechargeable lamp is really useful for that in the summer. Yeah, so if you want to be able to work outside, and yeah, then the you ones, can still the carry on. Yeah, the ones for the new one, is that on the graphics at the moment that's 49.99. That this one? Yes, do you want to get that one get out? On that. So, yeah. as obviously, thank goodness the light the nights are getting shorter and the days are getting longer, but if you're reading outside, yeah. Or um be very nice for outside dining at yeah. the middle of the table yeah definitely the yeah, for the evening yeah. be? be quite useful for that <laughs> very do you nice. remember that one you used to eat outside and have a drink yes <laughs> it's, it's coming job. back it's coming back it's going back but you could use it for that as well yeah. so that's kind of an all year round thing it's a very it? versatile lamp this one that it's got so many uses the mm. fact that it's so portable and just falls yeah. down falls down like that and you know it's even if you say you know, going away and you've only got hand luggage on the plane. Yes. You still I love the idea of taking it to the restaurant as well. Yeah, for, for even the menus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the, the day, in the dimly lit restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about the ring lamp next. I okay. Love, I love that because there was a lot of people now who were doing videos on Instagram or on Facebook or wanting to do little um, walkthrough instructions and tutorials. Yeah, so lots of people use this for things like that. They'll be go, they'll be doing lives and they want to be able to record what they're mm. doing for people to be able to see. Um, it comes with three of these holders that I've got my phone in. Right. So say people are doing Instagram and Facebook, they can have two phones in and oh, do wow. it at the same time. So right. they haven't got to record it twice, things like that. So it's got the LEDs in the light here. And again, it's got the different color temperatures. So at the moment it's on daylight. And then again, you've got your um, warm light, cool light and daylight. So you've got mm, all those okay. settings on there as well. What you'll also find with this is it's, um, it's adjustable. So you can have it up and you can have it down. So you could also use it just as general lighting. I do actually, because the office, my bedroom um 
that I use as an office is quite dark and it's only mm. got a tiny window. So I just have that on the wall and the room just feels like it's like you're outside. It feels like it's really nice. It's, well, lit. there's a lot of research done on, isn't it, on daylight and it making yeah. you feel happier. And obviously you can't prove that this does or it does Yeah, I mean, this isn't a sad light, which but, a lot of people ask me. But if you're in an environment that's light, bright and airy, yes. it just always makes you feel better in yourself. So that so. gives a really good light. So if you want yeah. just a general good light in the room. Yeah, then you and can just you use can that. use it. So say you need to photograph your quilt or you yeah. want to do a quick tutorial yeah. or show someone or you know, or photographing things to put onto um, online auctions and that people use sort them a lot thing. for photography and things like that. But also so the head actually tilt down. So I've oh, got my phone in here. Right. So oh. so say you're working on a project and you're you're doing a tutorial or you're doing a video and teaching mm. people how to how to do that, then you just obviously put that head down, have your phone in there, and then it will, then you just obviously set record, and then you can record, and you can be online showing people what you're doing. So you That's get brilliant. this little shutter with it as well. So what you do with this is you pair it to your mobile phone. You okay. download an app which all the instructions are inside. Right, okay. And then this will then operate your phone. Oh, that's amazing. So there's no more sort of like, oh, let me just press the button for start it, you know, start the phone and things like that. You can you, you can use this. Yeah, I think you need to move, yeah, just, just, what do you, just, need to? Yeah, just to where the lamp is. Okay, see. put it in there. Yeah, then we can see it, that's better. Oh no, it's, I think my machine's in there. What's in the way now, it needs to go up. up. You, there we go, perfect. There we go. So that's the <laughs> remote. So that yeah, that's a remote control, and then that then operates your phone. So when you want oh, to right. press record or take the photos, then particularly if you're sat down in your demonstration, you haven't got to get up to then go and touch. Or you get someone else to do that, couldn't you? So if you were actually sewing, yeah. somebody else could be pressing that as well. So yeah. it's really multi-purpose. Yeah. So used for lot for lots of different. So we've got a nice things. message from Linda. Hi, my husband bought me the floor standing lamp, and I love it. It's great to have the remote images, easy to turn on, but also turn volume. Oh, is that the volume of the light? Probably, yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah, the, the brightness. So there's I'd a say. slight delay on the delivery of this one. Yeah, there's a slight delay. We're just waiting for the stock. It's actually at the port. It's just got to get got to get right, to us. Okay. Um, there's just some delays in the port at the moment. So we're saying ten days, but it'll okay. probably be quicker than oh, that. Okay, but Be just so you know, yeah, there will be about a ten day yeah. delay on that. But that's only on this one. That's only on this one. I think that's yeah. fantastic. There are so many people now doing their own little videos and tutorials. and yeah. But also, the, it's so multi-purpose because it is a lovely light to have. A light stylish as well. Yeah, and also, I forgot to say, each one's got brightness levels on as well. So you right. get, you, you know, that's, the, that's the lowest and then that's so the So if brightest. you're photographing something, yeah. you could just try it on all these different levels to see what's right. And even an hour later, you might need to change those Exactly, depending on what the light's like outside and things like mm. that as well. So, But a lot of people use it for um, for recording things that they're, that yes. they're working yeah. on as well. Or even if you've just, you, I mean, if you've got lots of different things that you think, you think, but well, I want a light to be able to craft with, but you can use it for that because you can just bend it down yeah, and have, have, that, have a larger area. Before, I think you've that. had to have a light and then you've had to have something to put your phone in, but those two come together. Yeah. So that's obviously that's you know separate, but yeah. So that's that's a really a really nice light. That's been very popular actually on Sewing Street. Mm, I think that's so. cool. that is a fantastic piece of equipment. It's really stylish as well. Yeah, so yeah. We've tried to keep them all nice and sleek and. Well, stylish. I know. I mean, and I think that's lovely that this is your company and that you've set it up because you know, don't you, that this doesn't have to be just utility lighting. Exactly. It's got to be nice. Yeah. Because people won't don't want. And we things. also bought out a lot of black lights where it's always been just mm, white craft yeah. lights. And so we've sort of looked at different colours and where we can, we try and offer every light in black and white oh, okay. as well. I mean, I really, yeah, I love the, the black gooseneck. It's lovely. Um, should we, the big magnifier light, we're just going to have a quick nether look at because yeah. um, there's lots and lots of you got it in their baskets because of the split pay. So we'll just go through that one more time. Okay, right. So we take the lid off. So it's $136.99, but you two equal payments of $68.49. Can't do that okay. immediately, so you, if you want to. So we go on yeah. here, and then you've got your little eye and your little sun here. So the eye is to change your colours to daylight, warm light, or mm. cool light. And then this is your little brightness button. So you've got three brightness levels on each colour as well. Yeah, I think it just needs to move over. Yeah. Perfect. And 
it's 1.75 times magnification right. on this one as well. So if I just take a couple of these little beads. And it's just turning the lights off. And then we can just show that how it magnifies there. It? So if I just come to the side, it's quite hard to actually even see mm -hmm. them. And then once you go under the magnifier, yeah. you can see, you know, how well that, that shows those. Tell so you. we are now down to the final six of these lights, if you want one. But I mean, it, really, it is worth taking advantage of the split pay because it just makes it a little bit easier, doesn't it? But yeah. you will get it straight away. People often ask that. Do I have to wait two months? No, no, it? no. This one comes from me. I oh, okay. I send this one out directly. So right. obviously it's normally, um, as soon as Sewing Street send the orders to me, we send them out the next day by oh, okay. DPD. So, oh, yeah. fantastic. Another thing to maybe mention is the ha the uh, reach on it. So if, obviously if you, you've got a big area... And it comes with the clamp, and I presume that yeah. just goes onto a normal table. Yes, it comes with a clamp, and, and that's quite a deep clamp. So you can go onto something as small as, as one centimetre, because oh, okay. it screws very small. Maybe you've got a very thin glass table. And then it opens up as far as, I think it's about nearly eight centimetres. Oh, well, that's so yeah, quite, quite a much big, bigger than a word. Quite a dip one and it's also got um, protection pads on it to make sure that obviously right. it doesn't damage any ah, furniture okay. yes, as well quite on there isn't it? on that one so so let's do the, the little um the little magnifier i okay. really like that i mean it's because you need different lighting depending on where you are or what you're doing or what your craft or your hobby is yeah so we've got obviously that's why we sort of like thought about everything for, for for everybody really you know sometimes people don't need such a large magnifier so we've got the small smaller one here and that works in the same way so you just take the the lid off yeah this has only just come back into stock in sewing street actually oh, okay. so this this one was 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 very popular so 42.99 for this one the chameleon desk magnifier lamp. yeah so you've got the on and off and again you've got the daylight cool light and the warm light so you've got mm. your different your different color settings there and different brightnesses for each one as well okay on that one again you've got the bendy gooseneck so right. you can so angle it's all, you can move it all over the place yep. you could use it next to your sewing machine if yeah. you wanted to yeah a lot to. of people do actually sort of angle it next to the sewing machine so that they've got that magnification just that, because all those sewing machines clearly do come with lights they're not very bright there's not and also they just light where you're working yeah. you might want the actual light around the area well often i find i don't sew in the evening on my machine yeah. because the light's not good enough it's fine you know you've got the very directed light but sometimes it because of the stitch plates metal the, yeah. the light bounces in the wrong way and you can't see anything this um, one's got three times magnification oh so, that's so this stronger. one is is oh, a you very see strong very what strong a needle one. looks like oh okay yeah um mm. underneath it after my i can't thread my needle up to change it so we've got a needle here. So if we can, you can see that there. How much? Yeah. Easier. So if you move to the centre, then we can, then we can get really close. Yeah. You have to. If, can we get that? Can we get that in the middle? Yeah. Hang on, we just got to wait. Like, we're coming in. We're coming in now into land. Whoa, you can really see it. And that's a that is a tiny uh, tiny needle they've given me there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that really, you really can see the you eye, see of, the the eye of the needle in there. Yeah, <laughs> you like, really would. But that's so much quicker. You just quickly put it under the lamp, thread your needle. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> like that. That's really that's a lovely product, isn't it? It's it's, it is a nice light. It, it's a nice light. And again, it doesn't take up a huge amount of space. And you either. can just use it as a light and not a magnifier. Yeah, so you, you just pop to. your lid on. And then if the lid just popped on, and then it's like it's perfect as a light as mm. well. So you've got the best of both worlds with this one as well. And you could have that, you know, on a side table if you were sitting in the living room and just doing some embroidery mm. or something and you needed a bit of extra light. Yeah, definitely. Um, but then if there's a bit you can't see, you think, oh, I'll just have a quick, there's the magnifier. Yeah, 100%. It's really good for that. And then I've got like a little ladybird um, here. So as well, just sort of like show how huge that, well, that looks. Yeah. <laughs> the little ladybird difference. button, it's tiny. As you can see there. Yeah. That, wow. So you've got a, a huge killer ladybird. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and it comes out there. So yeah, it's 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 a lovely it's a lovely lovely magnifier, and and it's got the again it's got the colour changing on it mm. as well. So majority of our lights have got the colour change. That's another thing about uh, native lighting is that mm. majority of them have got the colour changing. But when they only have one light, then it's normally always the daylight setting okay. that we have. So we've got a message from Carol on Facebook. She says, "I like the magnifying glass." My, my bad. My eyes are getting bad. Old age. Well, I know. I know. I'm totally with you there. We're all in <laughs> denial for a very long time, and then you just have to give in to it. But with the magnifier, yep. I magnifier. think it, it's a shame when you have to stop doing certain yes. crafts. I think. I think it's nice when we hear these stories that, like, oh, since I've been able to have your light, I've been able to start doing this again, mm. and I haven't done it for years. Well, it's like for me, I would use it. I mean, particularly for fine embroidery. I yep. love embroidery, and I have to wear my super strong um, Poundland glasses for that, which yeah. are rubbish. It make me feel a bit <laughs> you sick. You need to get one of these. Because I look up and I go, oh, and I feel really hit, but that would be brilliant. And I used to do a lot of um, cross stitch over one thread on even weave, and I just can't do that anymore. No. But I would be able to. You would. And there's so you... many people I hear, they go, oh, I don't do that anymore. Yeah. And, you know, what a shame if you've loved that. Exactly. It's only to do with your eyes, isn't yeah. it? Not to do with yeah. your ability. No, so, <laughs> exactly. This gives you your eyes back. It does. <laughs> <laughs> Which we all would like. I'd like to have my eyes back. <laughs> One more table lamp. Oh, One more table lamp. Yes. So this is our uh, um, most affordable what, okay. lamp. Okay. And what we do find is quite a lot of people think, oh, I'm not too sure if I want to invest in, 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 in a lamp. Right, so this is one. beginners. Beginner so this is beginners that haven't beginner really purchases. used a light. <laughs> and then what they find is that it's, wow, it such, makes such a difference. I'm going to buy a big one or I'm going to buy one with more features and yes. more functions. Yeah. So this is a USB one. So again, um, charge it either, power it either in a laptop or your computer or a battery pack, or just, you can plug it into the mains with the type of plug that you get with your mobile phone. Oh yeah, so, so we've all got those yes, anyway, so that's fine, you just, use, you just plug it into one of so those. So this is, is like a spotlight, this one. So you've got a okay. big daylight spotlight. So it, again, a lot of people say they take these in the car when they're, they're going on a long journey and they can carry on with right. their crafting. Again, traveling. Yeah, because you can put it into a battery pack. Put it into a battery pack, so then you've got the power to, 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 to make that work. Ladies say that when they go and stay in hotels, the, the lighting's so bad they can't see to do anything, so yeah. they'll take one of these with them. Well, particularly when you put your makeup on and things like that. Yeah, so know, many, yeah. You, when you really need to see, yeah. that makes quite a difference, doesn't it? So again, we've got the gooseneck. So we thought this sort of like mm. f filters through into all of our lamps, really, the gooseneck. And again, you've got, you've got, you can position yes, it is. down, you can position it up. Yeah, so $23.99 is a great introduction Yes. to lighting but also really useful as well exactly so a lot of people have more than one light um because mm. they know how invaluable they are so sometimes you'll some people have a big magnifier somebody will have this to have on their desk then they'll have one of the floor lamps so that it's in the lounge so they've yes. got the light wherever, wherever and now they're they going to start their instagram videos and so they'll and have a ring light and yes and their <laughs> yeah. tutorials so. and yeah so yeah so there's lots of um do a lot of people do have more than one light we find well, it depends on the option what you'll what yeah. you need it for. You might need one for your sewing machine. Yes. Which you know this gooseneck one is ideal for, yeah. isn't it, for the extra lighting on that? But then yeah. the big magnifier is perfect for sort of close up work yeah. that you're doing. Then and then the small lamp is is ideal for yeah. sitting on the sofa. And another thing to mention is that all of our lights are LED, so mm. um, LED bulbs never need replacing. So, so how does this, the little one, the more affordable one, compare with your lamp that you had, your budget lamp? But does this one? Yes. How does the, you know, the the one where we showed the difference in colours? Does that do the same thing? So it gives you daylight to obviously. So if you be a, show if if you get your lamp out. Oh, do you want me to do the two? Yeah, the two colour just, differences? just only because they're different. So I wanted to see. Yeah. Okay. You know, if people wanted to buy the more affordable one, does yeah. it do the does same? Does it do the same? So yeah, what I was saying about LEDs is that obviously you never have to change the bulbs and they'll last up to oh. 40,000 hours. That's quite a long time. So that works out, I think, about eight 
hours a day, 20, 20 years. Right. So they, they last a long time. If there's ever any issues with any of them, everything's guaranteed mm. for two years. Oh, okay. So it would That's always a just, long guarantee. Always just be a straight swap if there was and any issues. And the bulb issues. will last 20 years? 20,000 hours, depending right. on how many... About. Yeah. About went, depending on how many um, mm. hours that people... Do. Sorry, not 20,000 years, 40,000 hours. Yeah. Get more my years and my hours mixed mm. up. Um, so, yeah, a long time. And they a don't generate time. any heat as well. So, you know, Which when you're used, used to it? maybe use the old-fashioned style with a bulb... Oh, yeah, and you get really hot. Yeah. So... As you can see, the colour changes there. Yeah, so you it, don't so have to spend... It's exactly the same as if you use any of the lights. So even though it's the more affordable one, it does yeah. exactly the same it's, thing. It, it's the daylight bulbs that make the difference. And that's what they've all got. That's amazing. Yeah, you're never going to be colour matching with your bedside lamp, are you? <laughs> that is such a difference, isn't it? Because, I, cause, I mean, I know what that colour is because the lights in the studio are very good. So I know that the one on the left is the right colour. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lovely lilac, and you know when you see the, the warm light yeah. on the other side, it's it, it's pink. Well, because the um, studio lights are daylight, yeah. we know that those are the right colour. Yeah, fact, this is the best place for colour matching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the studio has got loads of nice bright daylight lights. And then obviously we did it earlier as well, just the tur with the, I'm with, amazed with to say the that turquoise. It does it with turquoise and lilac. Yeah. Yeah, some some colours it's it's much more noticeable than yeah. others. Um, but but yeah, turquoise and, and, and the lilac is is really really big difference as well. Yeah, it's just weird, so isn't it? it how it's yeah. gone jade. But then I guess it's because you're mixing blue and yellow and it goes green. Yeah, yeah. It's like primary school, <laughs> which is really important if you're doing embroidery as well and you're wanting you know to choose your stranded cotton. Yeah, that's another thing when there's mm. so many you know. Im um, so many shades that are so close together. Be good when you were painting, actually. You know, yeah, we you do sell a lot to, to, to actually, artists. Actually, the big circle light would be good. Yeah, a lot of artists do buy that one, actually. And also... I'm the, just thinking of decorating. You the, know, when you paint the wall and you go, yeah. oh, that's a completely Oh, yeah, my colour. other half used it when he was decorating because he said you could, you know, could see if there was any Well, also, you know, in the evening when you've got to do things, well, I can't do any of the decorating in the evening because I can't see the edges. Yeah. You just yeah. need one of those. And then, it, and then it gives you daylight. So, yeah, exactly. Mm. You can carry on. No excuses then. So we've got a message... Hi, how long is the cable for the LED desk lamp, please? The, little, the little one. Let me unplug it and I can... Oh. Mm. I haven't actually got the uh, measurements with me, but um, I think it's, it's well over a metre. Oh, OK. Yeah, quite a long one. Elliot thinks it's 1.4. Ah, OK, Elliot. yeah. He's guessing. <laughs> no, it, it was an it's estimate. well over a metre. Obviously, I haven't got. All, I make a measure. It's a tape yeah, there measure, is a tape it? measure hanging up behind you. Yeah, yes. There we go. So we're going to measure it exactly. If it, let's hope it's not one point four. <laughs> <laughs> it's one point four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? He measured that. I reckon Elliot measured that when we were looking. How would you know that was yeah. 1.4? <laughs> do you think that's a standard cable length or something? Majority of our cables are, okay. are yeah, about one. Probably, but some, some, some are about 1.2, 1.4, depending on right. yeah, which okay. one it is. That's so. a good length, though, isn't it? Yes. You can put it into a socket. Yeah, it is, exactly. It is 1.4. Yeah. Which is why they were built for. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to recap the brand new zigzag lamp. The folding up one, because that's brand new to us today. It's the only one that we've got on air today that's rechargeable. Perfect to take into the restaurant. I love that. It is our best-selling item today. I'm thinking summer barbecues. That would look lovely in the middle of the table instead of a candle. Yeah. Much safer. Yeah, definitely. Craft lighting, reading, um... But I just, well, or oh, a desk lamp when you've got, you know, if you're home officing. Yeah. But I think actually because it's so lightweight, I don't mean flimsy, but lightweight, it would be very easy if you just... Yeah, it's like it's an aluminium. So it's... Yeah, um, it is light, isn't it? It is, li it is light, but it's sturdy. It's light, you know, you, know, you don't sturdy. sort of think it's, you know, going to topple no. over or anything But you could like even that. have that on your ironing board if you were sort of yeah. measuring things. I use my ironing board as a work surface most okay. of the time. It's the right height. Yeah. And you can pin into it, but you could just quickly put it onto there without having any cables yeah. or... It's ideal for that. So you, with, you get a little uh, micro-charging cable... With, with the zigzag. And you use your, just your and phone, you just use your phone or, or plug or, or on your laptop. 
and um, then you've got your free brightness levels as well so if you just tap it very gently and then to turn it on and off you just keep your finger your finger and it's on it eight hours at low. eight hours at the low level and four mm. hours at and the highest level and it's all daylight level. Uh, this one is 4,700 Kelvin. Yeah, right. So daylight starts at 5,000. So it's, oh, it's only just a little bit off this below one. below yeah. daylight. So. Uh, and then obviously you just put that one down and then Internal. fold that up. And as we were talking earlier, a lot of these rechargeable lamps have the on and off button on the outside. Mm. And um, then what happens is you pop it in your bag or yeah. your craft bag, you take it out, and then you've lost all your charge because it's it touched something. That happens with something. lots of things, though, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's why when we designed this one, we thought, right, okay, we need to think about um, t doing something slightly different so that it. Well, it is nice. It is very that. lightweight, so you and portable, so you can take it away on holiday. Put take it yeah. in the caravan if you've got a holiday cottage or something it'd be perfect yeah. for that you can still do your craft means you can still carry on crafting which so you put you it in your, your craft bag and there you go yeah sorted which which is really important because people don't always want to give up their crafting when they go away or they go and no. stay at a, a relative's house i then, have special holiday projects as yeah. well because i was thinking like what can i take away with me that i can do i remember researching with what you could take on the plane yeah yeah, what's allowed. Yes, you can <laughs> yeah. take scissors as long as the um, blade is less than four centimetres. Yeah. Mm, I did a little bit of research in that. <laughs> but then you don't need to need as a crochet hook, so on the plane, you know, and yeah. everyone does have a holiday project, because you're obviously not going to take a big full-size quilt. No, exactly. And your sewing machine, unless you're taking your car, yeah. I guess. But um, then it's nice to have a light with you as well, so that's ideal. Yeah, definitely. But, um, Lovely. Brand new, brand new today. And remember, the large magnifying lamp is first time on split pay because Claire hasn't been with us since our birthday when we launched it so it's 136.99 or two equal payments of I can't with that in my head 60 something 68 pound 49 <laughs> that's too difficult to divide by two but we've only got four of those left now so if you want the um the large magnifying lamp which is just fantastic it's like you can get your craft back it's like getting your life back it's so frustrating when you have to give up hobbies that you've loved or really fine crafts because of the light your eyes and and it brings it all back again which is fantastic so thank you so much claire thank you for having me it's been really lovely so i think i was chatting to claire earlier about yarn lane i think we need to get your claire onto yarn lane I would love to come. Because there's a lot of very <laughs> fine knitting and crochet that we do and tatting, um, you know, threading the needles and needle tatting, all of that. But I think, so we, we're having a chat. Um, so we will get Claire onto Yarn Lane at some point because it would be really useful to go through very specific. Because although all these lights can be used for all crafts, us knitters and crochets have very specific needs. So yeah. we will get okay. um, Claire back on then. So thank you so much. It's thank really you. nice to talk to you. So... After the break, we have got the Man Cave fabric range. So it's all about hobbies. It's hobbies, lots of it. We've got loads of different fabrics. You'll love it. Very multi-purpose and quite fun as well. So we'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our program guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. 
And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. And welcome back to Sewing Street for the Hobby Fabric Hour. It's all about hobbies today, isn't it? Crafting hobbies, lighting hobbies. I love the name of this, it's called Man Cave. But you can't say it. you have to go, Man Cave. I don't know why, it just sort of sounds like that, Man Cave. So I think it's obviously an American fabric and I think in America they have man caves. I'm not sure what that is. Do you know in England, I think it might be a shed. But Man Cave. They have, I think they maybe have bigger houses and more space. Yeah, in, in England, it's the shed with the sherry, isn't it? What's that um, sitcom they used to have on where there were two blokes who lived next door to each other used to meet up in the shed and drink sherry? Oh, if any of you know, can you message him? Because I absolutely love that. And they'd always meet up and their wives sort of didn't know, but they did. I think it might have been the greenhouse and they'd always have a bottle of sherry and they'd meet up there. Somebody, no, Hannah doesn't know, she's too young. It wasn't The Good Life, but somebody will have watched that where these two guys used to meet in their man cave. Anyway, they wouldn't have had these because this is too modern for that era. So this one is called Gaming. And this has been on pre-order and is already selling fast. So let me show you. So we're selling this by the half metre, 6 99 for half metre. It's um, normal... Um, Quilting weight, 100% cotton fabric, so it's your 112 centimetre, 44 or 42, 44 inches width. Normal quilting fabric and, you know, lovely quality cotton, but this is great, isn't it? So on here, you've got all sorts of different brands of gaming and remote controls. And the, all the I like the fact that the spiral in the back is the cables with all the little cable ends perfect for making things for storage you know if you just want to make us something that's a bit of fun gift for 
doesn't have to be a man, could be a woman. Plenty of women do gaming. That's why I was laughing at being called man cave. Be great if you were making one of those remote control holders that go over the side of your armchair. Just little gift bags, but a cushion for somebody who's got really into gaming, put it on there, perfect for the children, for the grandchildren, you know, a little tote bag for them. Or you could make a little drawstring bag to keep all their, um, to keep all of these in. Um, you know, the little um, iPad stands that you have, you could use it for that. I've got a little fabric bag that I keep all my chargers in. You could use it for something like that. All those cables. I found, I was clearing out under my desk yesterday, three carrier bags of cables. And I was very tempted to throw them all out because I have no idea what they are. But I thought, no, I won't throw them all out, throw out some of them. Because you know what it's like, you throw them out and then you, don't, you, then you always need them. So make a little drawstring bag, put all your cables in there. But it's just a really lovely, fun fabric. You could also cut bits out for a bit of applique or fussy cutting because you've got all the different brands of um, gaming things. I'm not a massive gamer. I, do you know, I don't think I've got the patience for gaming. I lose or I get killed or I explode and I give up then. I'm, I don't think I've got the right... I don't think I have the right mindset. Although with sewing, I don't. If I can't do it, I can't wait go back. But if I get killed and it says game over, that's it. I'm over. But it would be really good for cutting out small pieces as well. It's just fun, isn't it? It's got really just a very black background and then all of these are grey. But it is nice with all the spirals. Actually, they're not showing up very well on screen. But behind... But yeah, if we get in a bit closer, behind all of these gamers, there are these sort of grey... They've really not shown up very well at all. There's all grey cords, spirals. You can see them better now. So half of the stock of this is already gone. Remember, if you haven't bought fabric with us before, we sell it by the half metre. So if you want more than half a metre, we will cut it for you and you get the whole lot. So if you want two metres and you put four units in your basket, you will get a two metre piece. You won't get four half metres. So if you thought, if you want to make yourself um, a brand new summer dress with um, gaming controllers on, for example, then you could buy two metres of fabric and you'd get it all in one. But that's how we do, unless we say to you, this is a pre-cut fabric, like our early bird was that's now sold out, then if we're selling it by the half metre, we will always cut. We've got a warehouse just opposite, a lovely place, full of people just cutting fabric to order. So, um, now, when everyone has checked out of this fabric, we are only got five metres left. But um, we're not sure how much you've all got in your basket. So if you do want this fabric, you need to check out. But it's great, you know, if you just bought half a metre, what a fun present. So if you've bought somebody a gamer for a birthday or for a gift, a gamer, a gamer, I'm trying to be generic. Hannah's laughing at me calling it a game, a, a gaming thing, whether it's whether it's a control or a cable or the whole unit, you could, you could, you could um, wrap it in this fabric or make a little bag for it. You know, sometimes people ask for an extra controller or a cable or the gold subscription thing, which allows you online for a year. I know all that, I don't really understand it, to be honest. All my kids, they've all got all these and I just walk by and they go, oh, mum, mum, I'm on level 25. I go, lovely, darling. No idea what you're talking about. We've got two, oh, not that one. We've got two card fabrics. Now, I understand these. These are lovely. So, one has got a red background and one has got a black background. So, if you know someone who loves cards, you know, they're just really cool. Now, for me, this Alice in Wonderland dress, this is back of the waistcoat, isn't it? This is this is um, tea dress. But I'm what I would do. I go red bodice, card skirt. Look fantastic, wouldn't it? Brilliant for a tote bag. Just fun, isn't it? If you know somebody who loves playing cards, somebody who's very keen on bridge or that kind of thing, you can make them a lovely gift. Or you can just make them a cushion. Be re really nice to make the centre of the cushion with this and put some borders around the edge. But it is just such a fun, fun one. So the one on screen at the moment has got the red background. Again, you could fussy cut them. So although they're all layered, there are some that are just on top, like this number, the two of spades. You could just cut that one out. But, you know, if you gave it a bit of stiffening, um, be brilliant for making a storage box. So if you use some of the Styleville foam interfacing that we sell on the website, 
you could use, you could make a storage box for that. It's just really lovely. I've not seen playing cards fabric before. But, <coughs> you know, from if you were making things for um, kids in the garden, you know, playing games in the gar garden, putting in little bags, you know, you could make small drawstring bags. Do you remember party bags? Remember when we had people around to our houses and we had birthday parties? Those days that are coming back, be brilliant for those. We've also got it with a black background, exactly the same, only black. So you have to choose or have both. There we go. And remember, this is cut by the half meter. So if you are making the full length ball gown from it and you need eight meters, just put 16 units in your basket. I think a dress would be absolutely amazing, a summer dress be really stunning wouldn't it I think it would really look really nice on holiday as you come down because I think I reckon once all this lockdown's over parties are going to be a big thing so get your playing card dress made now but if you don't want to I mean make a nice really nice like if you made found a pattern for a blouse a really pretty one with all little pin tucks and little sleeves in a playing card fabrics just just a bit of fun so Oh, I don't think I've shown that very well, folded that very well. So, so I've got, a, if you want, um, you know, I said earlier, it'd be really nice if you wanted to make maybe a bag and line it, or you wanted to use this for the center of the cushion and put some borders around it, or you wanted to use something for handles. I've got a bundle here of red, white and black that obviously goes perfectly with it. So if you bought half a metre of one of these fabrics or half a metre of both, let me put them together. You know, or maybe you wanted to make a quilt or, you know, a little throw or something to just go on a child's bed or you wanted something to go um, over the sofa or on your outdoor furniture. It'd be idea ideal for that. Or maybe you've got um, a bridge table, one of those fold out ones, you want to make a little cover for it. So I'm just showing you they go together, but that doesn't come with it. So for £10.49, that's your three half metres of red, black and white, which go exactly with that. So if you were making, um, you know, making a log cabin or you were doing some flying geese or just some HSTs and you wanted to mix some planes in with this, it would be absolutely perfect. But there's something lovely because the playing cards are all sort of um, multi-directional. It's really useful because then you can do lots of different patchwork with it. But what a fun quilt. You know, when you, you, so you want to make a quilt for somebody, you think, oh, well, they want one because they don't want it really traditional. This is really fun. But this bundle of the red, white and black, £10.49 for three half metres, 100% quilting cotton and the normal 112 centimetre, 44 inch width. So that's playing cards. I'm trying to decide if I was going to make a dress, which one of these. It's definitely not the remote controllers. I might go red, but I'm, so which, which one should we do next? Which one next, Hannah? Should we do darts or? Now, darts. We've just hung the dartboard back up in our house. I, and for years I didn't have it hung up because I knew I'd have darts on the floors and the wall. And we've hung it back up. They play it all the time. And we are getting darts in the floor. But maybe I should make a cover for it. Do you know when, when um, this, yes, yeah, so if you know someone who plays darts, you've got to make them a shirt from this, haven't you? So it's available in which background I've got? Right, the one on um, screen at the moment is the one with the, it says black, but it's not black, it's grey. The background of this, so it's half a metre, is actually, it's like a wood, so it's grey, but it's got lines in it, like it's um, a wood panelled background. So, um, yeah, any of you have who have turned their garage or their shed into a pub, this is perfect. We've got our dark border, but it's great. So the background is, like I say, it's a charcoal grey with black lines, so it looks like a wood panel. And then you've got the darts, but honestly, if you know someone who plays darts, you've got to make them a shirt from this. Fantastic, wouldn't it? Or a tie, or a bow tie. Make a great tie, wouldn't it? Actually, you can make a tie, a tie out of half a metre fabric as well. Be perfect, wouldn't it? What really good fun. 
But, you know, again, all those different things. You could make a cushion from it, a bag. It'd be brilliant for patchwork if you want to make a quilt or a throw or a picnic blanket or um, bean bags. It doesn't have to be. I know it's called man cave, but it doesn't have to be for men. It could be for kids. But you could use, um, you know, when you make those um, little bean bags that you use for throwing for children's games, it'd be ideal for that. It's just, you know, sometimes these fabrics are fantastic for just fun, a bit of fun sewing. And remember, so you can buy it by the half metre, six ninety nine. But if you want more than that, we will give it, we will cut it to order so you get the whole piece. You could make a dress from it, be a bit odd. I'm not sure about the dress. I'm thinking shirt. But if you're going to watch the darts... Or, you know, or maybe you're going to um, a games night or something, you know, in schools when they have those games nights and quiz nights and you turn up in your dart shirt, think you're more likely to win. So we've also got it with the white background. Now, this probably shows up better if I get you to come in close on this one. So the background, it, well, it's called white, but it's not. It's a creamy colour. But again, it's like wood panelling. So when you get in really close, look, now you can see all the lines there and there. So it's like a wood panelling. And we've actually got that fabric on its own. So I'm just going to show you. We'll come up. We'll give you the code in a minute. I'm just going to show you what this the fabric on its own looks like. And now that gives you, you can see much better the effect of the wood panelling. That's what the background of the darts is like. Only the dart one is slightly more muted, but that gives you an idea. I'll, I'll give you the code for this one in a minute. I just want to show what the background looked like. So you can either choose it with this white, well, it's more like a ivory background, or the black background, or both. You could make, um, you could make little blinds, couldn't you? For your shed games room pub oh no place like home absolutely i'm oh i'm so glad that you all watched it as well when they used to go to the shed and drink the sherry i when i retire i'm going to get a shed and sherry and invite my friends round and, <laughs> and we're all going to sit in the shed in our 80s and drink sherry Yes, why not make a darts? Well, yeah, make a darts runner for the floor. Mark, mark the Oki. And it would protect the floor. You could um, odicoat it and it'd be waterproof as well. <laughs> because there'll be, there's definitely drinks involved. No Place Like Home. I wonder if you could still watch No Place Like Home. Must be somewhere, must not. I love that programme. Sherry in the Shed. Well, it was a greenhouse, I think. Um, right, next... A wood effect, since I got that out earlier. I really like this. So this is, you know, often when they do fabric ranges, they'll always have some sort of um, low volume, like muted background fabrics. But that's the ones that go with this. But I think this is brilliant. This is nothing to do with hobbies. If you were making, say you were making a beach hut, like a beach hut doorstop. Or you were doing something for the bathroom. That's what it feels like. It's got, it's that real sort of, it's like a wood effect. It doesn't really look like the dark background one at all. But if you want it, a kind of, it's like floorboards. Or it's um, that, that sort of shabby chic vintage. It would look lovely um, teamed with some florals. Because I think this lovely muted wood effect with some pretty pink and green florals would look fantastic together. Really lovely. I always, I've got at home some lovely um, wood effect fabric and grass. They're really useful. I use them quite a lot. But this is lovely, isn't it? But it is very, very beachy. Brilliant for sort of beach bags. Very nice for bunting. But again, will work really well with floral fabrics. So that is the, well, it says white, but it isn't. It's more of an ivory and then the colours in it. The lines are a very pale grey, but it is a very sort of, um, what are those houses in America called where they're all boarded like this clap, weatherboard, clapboard or something? can't remember. Somebody will know. So that's the white one. And then also, also available in black, which isn't black, it's grey. Clapperboard, that's what it's like, a clapperboard house. Thank goodness for Hannah and her internet. 
So this has got a charcoal grey background. Again, it's wooden board. So, you know, it doesn't have to be used with any of these fabrics, just a really useful fabric. Maybe you're doing some applique or part of a quilt where you're needing to show this. You know, you could even use it um, if you want to do some kind of tree or wood effect because it, it feels like that. But, you know, if you're doing maybe free motion appl applique or if you want to use a dark background but you don't want solid and you don't want print, you just want a wash of colour, that's what it looks like. It's just really, really effective. But with any sort of bright primary colours on top, look beautiful. I like that one. Now, remember, 6 half a metre, 112 centimetres, 44 inches width, 100% cotton, normal, beautiful weight quilting cotton. And if you want more than half a metre, just put the number of units you want. So if you want a metre and a half, put three in your basket and it will be cut to order. Um, so I've got, a, which one? That's this one. This one is called Balls Fabric Bundle. Obviously. Obviously it's called that because it matches the snooker balls. But it's actually a really nice primary colour bundle, but it's not super bright primary colour. So the blue isn't royal blue. I sound like that advert. It's not royal blue. It's more, it's called Copen, but it's more of a French blue. If you know what a French blue is. And then the green isn't emerald. It's fur. So these colours in this bundle are all in the same shape, tone palette. The red isn't um, bright scarlet. It's a darker, a darker, like a Christmas red. Yeah, so they're sort of, they're the primary colours, but m more muted. And then you've got an orange. It's very, it is ball, snooker ball colours. And, that, and it has been chosen specifically to go with the snooker ball fabric, which I'll show you in just a minute. And then there's a yellow as well. So if you want, so £17.49 for five half metres. So you don't um so what does that say five balls fabric bundle one and a half meters it's not it's two and a half meters i thought my maths was going mad it should say two and a half meters you will get five half meters of fabric but it's a lovely traditional fabric so it is the primary colors but the as you can see it's more the deeper shades so you've got french blue like a fur green a christmas green orange and yellow and and that has been chosen specifically it is two and a half meters that's wrong so you get it's hannah's fault she was rushing now this goes as you can see with these see see look at the color choice there they match exactly so this is snooker what is what is this one called this one is called Man Cave Snooker Ball Fabric. It doesn't say that one. And it's got a green background, but again, it's not your super bright emerald green. It's the colour of bays. It is the colour of the bays, but it's not snooker. It's pool, actually. It's pool. Because I know that because it has striped balls. And snooker has solid balls. And pool has striped balls with and dotted balls. So now you can see, so this is half a metre, but if I put the mega, the mega bundle that's two and a half metres, you can see, da, 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 look at that, how well it goes. That's perfect. This would be a fantastic quilt, wouldn't it? If you bought um, the mega bundle of the plain colours, that could be, I mean, for a very, very simple quilt, you could just use squares of this and mix it with this for the boards and the sashing, it'd be perfect. But again, you know, all of those makes that you can make, you could make a dress with this. Maybe just the top or the skirt of it. It might be a bit much as the whole thing, but who knows? Make a shirt with it. Back again, back of the waistcoat. But if, um, bags, cushions, all sorts of things. Be really nice, actually, if you needed, if you wanted to make a wash bag for somebody, 
be really good fun. Or even, you know, if you wanted to make a wash bag and make it out of denim, you could use this for the lining. And just a little bit of fun. It's the sort of thing, it's nice to have a half a metre of one of these novelty fabrics in your stash. Just when you think, oh, I just want the lining that's just slightly different. So you could make a wash bag from an old pair of jeans and then line it with this. Oh, I'd love that. I might do that. I'll put this one in my bag. But it's pool, not snooker. Although, saying that, it has got a red solid ball and you don't have red solid balls. Do you? I didn't know you had red solid balls in pool. Oh. I thought you only had striped and spotted balls in pool. No. Yes, but why is... Oh, so the red is the cue ball. And the black is the, oh, why is the cue board? Do you know, I should know this. Because I've got a pool table at home and they play pool on it all the time. Clearly, I don't take any notice. But our balls are spotted and striped. And we've got snooker balls as well. But I didn't know you had red balls and black balls in it. There we are. Clearly not concentrating, but actually totally rubbish at snooker and pool. Um, I'm absolutely rubbish at it. <laughs> so if you know somebody who's in a snooker team or pool team, you could make them all matching shirts and they'd win. They'd win their next competition. So this one is um, like an ivory background, but it's not solid. It's got that sort of charcoal wash in it. So a bit like the background of the darts that had the um, striped. This is more of a wash in the background. Exactly the same. So it goes really well. This is 6 99 for half a metre. It goes really well with Hannah's special bundle, the balls bundle, that's two and a half metres. Two and a half metres of colours that match snooker and pool balls. I'm going to have a look at my balls when I get home. Can't believe I've missed that. I want to know why they haven't got a cue ball, because I know that's white. Where's the cube? Maybe someone's walked off with the cue ball, and where's the chalk? It's not there. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of balls on one table, isn't it? So that's the, well, we've called it white, but it's more of a grey colour. White pool balls. It's definitely from the man cave range. But women do play pool and snooker too, you know. They do, actually. Mm. Yes, now we've got one one final fabric in the man cave range. Yeah, that's strange. Maybe why is this sort of I'm interesting to know. This is called dad plaid. Because only men wear red and black checks. And only dads. Which is strange. It, may, <laughs> it makes you think that um, it's a kind of lumberjack's shirt, actually, isn't it? But it's a really nice black and red check in respect of the fact it's called dad plaid. It's just a, it's a black and red check. It's a teddy bear, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's, um, it's a lumberjack shirt sort of thing. But actually, it's a really nice, it's a nice size as well. And I'm just going to retrieve the tape measure retrieve the tape measure so that you can see how big it is in imperial each check is exactly one inch you can tell this is american can't you? exactly one inch and in english two and a half centimeters yeah beverly said the cue ball wouldn't show up as its um white background but they could have put the cue ball on the green one couldn't they yeah So it's an inch, it's an inch, but it's a really nice check. It's only for dads in their man cave. I love the fact, I love the English version is greenhouse bottle of sherry and the American version is man cave. <laughs> so that's, um, that actually goes, if you wanted to buy them as a set, the colours palette, well, as with any fabric sets, all go together. So all the reds and the greens. 
So we haven't done this as a mega bundle because I, we weren't sure that you'd all want a bit of everything because they are quite specific. But when you look at them together, obviously you can make your own mega bundle. But the green on the darts, on the flights, I know that technical term, the flights on the darts, the green, blue and red, are the same colours as these. So it's all the same colour palette. So you have, so we haven't put them all as a mega bundle, but in case you want to create your own, you'll have to put in every single skew and then you can have all of them. You could make the most amazing quilt for a room, couldn't you? Out of all of these. Look at that. I think they actually look quite nice together. You could cover the whole of your pool table in that. But no, if you wanted to make a sort of a game theme quilt or... I think that would make a fantastic picnic blanket. Imagine getting that out in the garden. It looked really good fun. You could buy all of them. All of them. Right, I've got some fabric with music words on. Carrying on the theme of hobbies. This is not in that bundle. This is a different. But it's very hobby. So that's why we've got this one. If you're thinking about hobbies. This is called music. S Oh, it's just called script, but they're all music words. So I'll read some of them. Ukulele, guitar, instrumental, harmony, country, beat, trumpet, flute, melody. Uh, classical drums, beat, harp, musical, sing, guitar, unplugged, rock music, instrument, trumpet, pop, rhythm, rock music, drums, jazz. That's lovely, isn't it? So if you wanted to make, um, cover a book, I think that would look lovely cover book. I, when I sorted all my fabric out um, last year, which took me quite some time. I ended up with a section that was just fabric with writing on. I love fabric with writing on. If you want to make a bag or cover a notebook or put it on, um, I put a, I made um, pockets for the front of a pinafore I've, owned, I've got and that had all text on it. It just is very effective. Doesn't matter what it says on it. So obviously it's ideal for somebody who loves music. It'd be brilliant if you wanted to make um, a tie or a bow tie or a dress fun fun dress or something you know anyone who loves music and this isn't just um it's not just like classical music or pop music it's all sorts because it's got instruments on it as well piano rock saxophone rhythm drums musical violin songs harmony blues piano there's all over there i like that I like and in fact it's got ukulele very niche for all the ukulele players out there so this is oh wow that's only 4.99 Four ninety nine. Mm, I'm liking that. I think I might add that to my section called fabric with words on. Or a book bag. Perfect for a book bag. It's got words. Or a lampshade. In fact, funny you should say that, Hannah, but I actually covered a lampshade with word fabric. Yeah, it looks really nice. Mm, it does look really nice. So that's only four ninety nine, bargain. That's a bargain. That is. I'm going to fold that up nicely. I lost half the stickers last week. It took us quite some time to sort it out. I ended up with them all stuck on the table. The snippets. Now I like this fabric because the snippets are metallic. I don't know if you tell. So there were four different colours, same pattern, four colours. We'll start with this one. But these are nice, so if you, oh, look at, I didn't know that, look at this. Look at this, it changes. I thought maybe it faded on the inside, but no, no, it's supposed to be like that. Look at that. So that goes really well with the gaming fabric. It's a bit Star Warsy, isn't it? Oh, talk about Star Wars, oh, May the 4th. Watch Yarn Lane, I've got this fantastic, we're gonna have Star Wars. Just, just remember that, May the 4th. May the 4th, we're gonna be doing Star Wars on Yarn Lane. Just remember that, yeah. Very excited about that. But I love this, I thought honestly when I opened it, I thought oh, something's gone wrong, but isn't that lovely? So the, the little um, thingies, whatever they are, the little bits are metallic, so they shine. 
but and they actually which shows so you start off on the edge and it goes black it goes all the way to light gray so you can use it as it is as a big piece of fabric and it will change color or it'd be perfect if you needed to cut strips so you could cut them horizontally and they would change color as you go along or you could um, cut them vertically and from one piece of fabric you get like six or seven different shades so you can make your own design roll strips cut them across join them back together and you'd have a whole patchwork all in different colors that all went together I like that so that's the black one there's a green one so imagine if you cut say two and a half inch strips across the width then sew them together and then cut them all up that's lovely, isn't it? This goes really well with the um, green pool, pool ball, doesn't it? But you see, so on the edge, you've got real emerald green and then it moves all the way through to a really pretty mint and then back again. So you cut strips vertically and you get about six different colours, I think, if you cut them all the way across or just use it as it is. I love that. But if you were making a border on a quilt, you know, and, and in fact, you, you could easily join them together if you cut them across the width, because on either end, um, the colours are the same. So you could join them either end in really lovely colour changing. It's just nice to have a, fab a fabric that's something a little bit different. This will sell out today. We don't have much of this left. So if you want it, you do need to get that. Nice as a quilt back as well just because it's a bit more interesting. Nice as a picnic quilt back because it's green. So it looks like the grass. We've also got it in, um, oh, now I like this one. There's two blues. This one is called, this one is called code, um, no, I've gone past it. Ah, there we go. It is LSYV51. This is navy. Oh, I like that. So you have on the edge, there's only four metres of this left. Now on the edge, it's so dark navy, it's almost black. And then it goes all the way through to beautiful bright royal blue. Isn't that lovely? That's very lovely. Pleated skirt. Only two metres left. There, that's a really lovely one, isn't it? Make a nice, um, sorry, there's only meters left now. Be a nice, nice blind, wouldn't it? Like a s s star. Um, and then there's another blue one, and this one is called Blue. <laughs> wonder how they thought of that name. <laughs> wonder where they came up with that idea. Really bright, isn't it? So the edge is French blue. You see the edge is the same colour as that blue. And then it moves from the balls bundle into more electric blue. But it looks like stars. And that's because these, well, it's called snippets. The snippets are metallic. It, oh, it's very ocean, isn't it? Would it make beautiful blinds or curtains? But it does look like little bits floating it's really pretty, isn't it? Love that one. And can we just can we just look at the selvage? I love a selvage, but look at the selvage. Isn't that lovely? It's got instead of because normally selvages have blobs, circles, but they've put it as they put it as little snippets. Love a selvage. Sold out. Gone. I've got two more fabrics from the Spectastic. Did you make that word up, Hannah? <laughs> They're very nice, just a very, the Spectrastic, or is it Spectastic? Spectrastic. Okay. These are nice colourways. In fact, if you're going to get these, it's worth getting the two together because the blue, again, it's very French blue. On screen, I'd say it looks quite royal blue, but it isn't. It's more of a French blue. And then the yellow is not super bright sunshine yellow, but it's not mustard. It's sort of in between. So they really are. Um, that is American mustard yellow. Oh, but it's called bicycle. 
So anyone who has a yellow bicycle, that's obviously the same colour. Um, but the blue is not a royal blue. It, it is this, it's the colour of um, American mustard. And it's called bicycle. I wonder why it's called bicycle. I mean, it's not even like school bus, is it? Random. Do you know, I reckon they just couldn't think of a name and they went, oh, we'll call it bicycle. So it's yellow and then it's just got, like someone's got a paintbrush, dipped it in black paint. And then, <laughs> and then it's actually the same colour as my car. And actually, it looks like someone's got a black paintbrush and then splattered all over it. And to be fair, after a trip up the motorway, the back of my car looks quite like this. I reckon somebody's copied me. I love it, though, because I love the fact it's got this texture in it. So rather than it just be a plain yellow, can we get in a bit closer on this, Elliot, please? So you can just see... It is very um, contemporary, isn't it? But that just shows you close up. Now, it doesn't, across the fabric, there are different intensities of splatters. So some areas like this are quite intense, but others are more, hang on, I'll just move. A bit more open, a bit sparser. But that's a lovely fabric. If you, want, if you want a yellow fabric with a bit of background texture, it will go very well with the man cave fabrics. I don't know why it's called bicycle. I think that's great. Maybe all fabrics should not be named after their colours. Mm. <laughs> and then this is the same fabric, only this is blue. And again, it's that sort of, it's not royal blue, it's more of the French blue. And the splatters in this are white. But it looks like very um, starry sky. Starry, starry sky. Like that. That's lovely. I like the fact it gives it that sort of movement and texture, but it just, it, it's very multi-directional. So it doesn't matter if you were joining, if you were joining um, it on the different angles or straight or horizontal or vertically, it wouldn't matter. Make brilliant kids clothes though. Really good fun. Kid, yeah, little, little kids dungarees. But look nice. And actually with yellow pockets. Oh, that's so lovely, isn't it? And yellow turnips. They look lovely. And a little yellow t-shirt underneath. That's really nice. It's just, it's, I think it's nice to have plain fabrics that have a bit more expression in Sometimes as well, when you're trying to choose a fabric, particularly a binding that matches, you can never find something that matches. So if you get something that has a bit of a print or a texture or something like a spot like this, it does help the fabric to blend in better with other things because you're not trying to exactly match. Well, that's my theory anyway. It's only half a metre that now. And that's not this one. Tim Holtz. I like Tim Holtz fabric. <gasps> These are just by the half metre. I love Tim Holtz um, fabric. Now, he started off designing um, papers for paper craft. That's what he did. But his um, the style of his design is very eclectic. It's very sort of urban... Um, <laughs> the word or scrapbook, scrapbook, you know, when you put together lots and lots of different fabrics and when you look at what he chooses, I'm going to choose one where you can see it quite well. And it's going to be this one. So what he does, he chooses, um, he takes lots of things like receipts and letters and stamps and bills and all sorts of things. And then he puts it all together. So when you look at this fabric, initially it looks like just splashes of colour but then when you get in closer you can see that there's it's all overlaid collage that was the word I was looking for it's a collage so you've got part of a letter here and then you've got I think that's a receipt because it says five pounds on it these are all so this is all named after streets in London this is called Great Portland in fact it says there 32 Great Portland Street West 1 but it's beautiful, it's amazing. It looks like almost that he's layered together like electric blue, plum, purple, orange and yellow and then used a bit of sandpaper to rub bits off and then overlaid it with letters and bills. But it's fantastic. Um, you can just use it as it is and then choose colours 
from your stash plain colours that match in with it because you've got all of that colour range of blues and plums and rusts and purples and oranges and all different sorts of things. But that's a fantastic colour. Also, because it's um, because a lot of the receipts and the bills and the letters that are put on it, they go in different directions. So you've got this one that goes that horizontally. You've got one that goes vertically. So it can be used as a multi-directional fabric, but it actually is a beautiful, beautiful designer fabric. And I do like the way it always said these fabrics say this fabric is designed to have a distressed appearance with printed imperfections. Just in case you get it home and think, oh, it's not printed properly. It tells you I would actually have to cut that um, bit of selvage out and stitch it in the middle. This is designed to have a distress. I'd have I have. In fact, you could just put I have a distressed appearance with printed imperfections. <laughs> <laughs> you could just have that. Just change, take that bit off and say, I have a distressed appearance with printed imperfections. <laughs> it's that whole sort of steampunk era, isn't it? But all of these fabrics are like that. So I'm going to start on the top of the pile now. Now I've shown you this one. Um, this one is called Abandoned, which has a distressed appearance with printed imperfections. <gasps> look at that it's called gridlock i love that london environs and then you've got one times seven is seven it's got the times tables on here very useful nine times seven is 63 could be useful could be useful if you put it the put that in the center of your tote bag oh it's got the six times it's got all the times tables it's got Three, what? Yeah, it's got all of them. They're useful. Eight. I've just realised that, and they're right. But it's lovely that they, it's it's the sort of geometrics and circles as well. But then it looks like almost like a watery effect as well. So it's just it's one of those fabrics you could use um, in amongst others in a quilt or as a background. But it really stands on its own as well. If you made something as simple as a tote bag with this, it's, it's just like a real talking piece. But, you know, if you were lining something with it, maybe you'd made a coat or a jacket. It would be fantastic. You can imagine opening a coat and look at the lining of this. It's, it is stunning, isn't it? It's the sort of fabric, though, for me that I want to own but never cut up always useful but we all have those i don't think there's anyone who has fabric they don't ever cut up but it, i would use it just as it is make a nice wash bag with it i always say wash bags because i love a wash bag but a little zip bag just you know this section just london it's lovely isn't it but I, it's a really nice shades of brown i'm not really a massive fan of brown fabric but this is quite contemporary so i quite like it uh, it is very designer yeah it would look lovely wouldn't it Right, this one is called Stained Damask. Let me open this one out so you can see. That's very lovely, isn't it? It's got, yes, it's really weird. From above, you can see the zigzag going down. But when you get in closer, you've got like um, mosaic tiles. Again, the Tim Holtz signature printed text where he's cut out receipts and different parts and bills and times tables this is a lovely mixture of browns charcoals and sort of gray greens as well beautiful yeah peaky blinders it's lovely isn't it you make yourself a little hat from this but i just I mean, it is beautiful, you know, it will stand on its own, but I think it would make a lovely lining just when you want that sort of little element of design or surprise inside something. This is a lovely one. If you want, if you're thinking you want a sort of a dark charcoal for something, but you want a bit of interest, this is like all um, crackle glaze. Now, this one is called Cracked Shadow. So you've got a dark grey crackle glaze background but here and there bits of text just come out again it's those layers I don't know how he creates these he must put one layer on top of another and another and I have no idea it's beautiful and you can imagine you know how he started off that he did papers for paper craft and scrapbooking but doesn't it 
work beautifully as fabric as well. It looks like from a distance, it does look like a stormy sky. It's fantastic. But it's very, um, very contemporary, very urban. But remember, with these sort of fabrics, they do mix really well with more traditional fabrics. So in the same way that you can put spots and checks with florals, you can mix something that's very contemporary and dark like this with something that's very traditional as well. They look absolutely quite stunning together. So if you paired this with a pretty floral, it would look amazing. It's just that the contrast is the juxtaposition of contemporary with traditional makes you look like a designer. This one is very similar. It's called, um, I don't know what this one's called because it's that bit's not, something tile, faded tile. So it's very similar to the greeny one we saw. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? That would make a lovely shirt, wouldn't it? looks very sort of 70s but then when you get in really close it's got almost like this tiled background and again you've got here and there you can see the text coming through it 19 oh something but this is this is it feels very masculine doesn't it but if you were making um maybe you could make like a zip case like an ipad case or a laptop case or a man bag and use some leather suede or pu to put as the base of the bag or just for the corners look incredibly stylish so you know 749 and you would be able to make a laptop case with this and then if you use a little some scraps of like pu or leather on the corners would look fantastic again linings i mean it's just a beautiful fabric isn't it i do like do love tim holtz fabric hannah's going to google to see what tim holtz looks like he's a genius that's what he looks like he is a design genius and what i like about it as well is that you can because he is such a design genius, you can use his colour palette, and pinch it as your own. So, like, this fabric looks beautiful. The colours in this go together really, really well. He's not that old. No, I don't think he is that old. Um, <coughs> but when you look at the colours that have been chosen on here, if you wanted to use this colour palette... Oh, Hannah's now going to show us a picture of Tim Holtz. Oh, um, so she... No, she's just shown to me. We're not allowed to show you live because it's good. So you'll have to Google it, Tim Holtz. No, he's quite... Mm, yes, let's get him on. I think... Um, I think he's American. I think he's American. Google him if you want to know what he looks like because we're not allowed to show the picture, unfortunately. But anyway. But going back to colour palettes, I do like the way that this the mixture of the different shades of emerald grass green mustard yellow and rust actually work really well together so you can use if you struggle with color choice which i do i just find fabrics and designs by people who i know are good designers and then i just steal their color palette and pretend it's my own but this is lovely when you look at i think i need to turn it this way around for you to see so you've got um Grid lines, principles of writing, that's in French, month, time book. There's so many different things. You've got different languages on here, different sorts of things. I think we might have a shopping list as well. One socket set. I know I think this might be a receipt. One brass rod fittings. I wonder what they were buying. Could have been plumbing. I guess it's quite hard because it's all handwriting to actually read what they all are. So this one is called, has this one got a name? Principal Methods, but that's lovely shades of green. So again, if you are doing some quilting and you want, you needed a bit of green in it, rather than using a plain green, if you, the green and the brown and the yellow together is lovely, but fantastic for smaller makes. And they are beautiful pieces of fabric. They are the fabric that you add to your stash and never use until that one day. And you go, oh, yes. I know exactly what I'm going to do with that. Nice book cover. Oh, oh, I've lost a label. Where did that go? That's right. Now, these colours are fantastic. This is very autumn, isn't it? It's called Writing Specimen. But it's 
but it is very autumnal, isn't it? You've got the deep, deep ready rust moving to the oranges and the greens. And then you've got, again, Tim Holtz, um, words all over it. Specimens of handwriting showing the improvement by home practice of those following the self-teaching system. I wonder he must collect loads of this, but it's very colour changing, isn't it? It's a beautiful piece of fabric. But you know, if you, you could cut out from here leaf shapes, shapes and applique those to a quilt, it would look just beautiful because the colour's done for you. You haven't got to think about the palette and how you're going to do it. It's all there. That's lovely. But again, you know, even in dressmaking, that's stunning, isn't it? Because, because it is so beautiful. I mean, there's a lot of time and care and attention that's gone into that. I think that's lovely. And I think that is the last one we have managed to do. Um, now, please do check out your baskets, please. Because um, remember, if it's in your basket, doesn't mean it's yours. You need to check out. There is only one PMP per day. Once you've paid your three pound ninety-five, that's it. Up until midnight, you won't be charged anymore. So once you've got one in your basket, your PMP is free after that. Um, oh, because we're now sort of halfway, almost halfway through, we're just going to do a refresh of what's coming up for the rest of the day. So next, we've got Amber Makes. That's me. Um, with the stained glass sunrise panel that's been hanging behind me all morning. And I'm going to show you, if you've ever wondered how to use a twin needle, I'm going to show you how to use a twin needle, how it works and how magic it is. So the kit's got the panel in the instructions and I'm going to teach you twin needling and how to mitre a corner with binding, So which you can use in lots of different things. So this is totally exclusive to Sewing Street and it's coming up next. And then at 11 o'clock, we've got sewing room tools. We've got lots and lots of different tools and gadgets that are just perfect for you. You're gonna enjoy that. And at 12 o'clock, it's Sincerely Louise on Yarn Lane, who I'm very excited to meet, bit of a fan, um, with her beautiful knitted animal head kids kits. The sheep, you can see there, is brand new, brand new. Louise is launching it with us and she's been running a competition for the last few weeks on Name the Sheep and today she is going to be announcing the winner of the Name of the Sheep. So it's brand new. Um, if you want to shop with us on Yarn Lane, you have to go on to yarnlane.com. So if you're watching Sewing Street, you stay on the same channel if you're watching on the TV, but if you want to shop with Yarn Lane, you need to go on to www.yarnlane.com or if you're watching online or on Facebook, you need to go onto yarnlane.com. So we have a different website for shopping and a different phone number, but the PMP is the same. So if you've bought anything on Sewing Street, your 395 is already done and it carries onto Yarn Lane as well. So we're sort of together and we're sort of separate. So um, that's really exciting. I can't wait to meet Louise. I've been speaking to a lot. I've knitted quite a few of her kits, so I love knitted animal heads. And I'm looking forward to the sheep because I've got the ram and I want the matching sheep. So that's coming up at 12 o'clock. Anyway, so go make yourself a cup of tea and come back with me in just a couple of minutes. And we're going to do the stained glass window that's here. OK, I'll we'll see you in a couple of minutes. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young, doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing 
and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. And welcome back to Sewing Street for the Amber Makes Hour of the Stained Glass Sunrise. So, quite excited about this one because um, it's a printed panel, so it just makes it very simple for you. I wanted to create a kit, well, Amy and I, actually, because Amy and I together at Amber Makes, um, I come up with these fab ideas and then Amy has to create something glorious for them. But it's a really nice thing that you can make this panel. I'm standing in front of most of it, actually. Shall I move over? There you go, you see it better now. There you go. Um, you can make the whole panel, there it is. It's all printed. Now, the good thing about it is you can do as much or as little as you want. So, the one that I did, <laughs> yes, that picture is actually on the back of my house. Look, look at all the bits of brick, the bits of stone that are peeling off. I wonder what happened to it. I was gonna take a, when after I'd made it, I'd need to take a photo. I thought, I won't hang it on the garden fence. I'll put it on the wall. But oh, the brick's sort of crumbling. A little bit worrying, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's only that colour because I live in Bath and all the, house, the houses are all that colour. So with this, you can do as much or as little as you want. So, I mean, you know, to make this yourself using the stained glass method takes quite some time and it's quite intricate but to make it simpler for you this is all printed now the joy of having amy who can create these things to demand for me is that i said right all the lines all the black lines need to be exactly three millimeters wide because i want to use a twin needle to quilt and my twin needle is three millimeters apart so luckily all the lines are exactly three millimeters apart mm. So we, yes, we've had that available for a minute and a half and the first 50 have gone. So you do need to put it in your basket and check out. So you can do as much or as little quilting as you want. You could just quilt around the cross or around the dove or around the rainbow. I quilted around everything only because I think I got a bit carried away and I quite enjoyed it because I've done a bit of twin needling before but not to this extent. And it's quite exciting actually, once you've worked out how to do it, because you just get these beautiful parallel lines of stitching that you wouldn't. But you don't have to use a twin needle. If you don't want to do that, you can just use a single needle and quilt through the center of the black lines. And I will show you all of that because I've done the sample piece. Um, so in the kit you get the panel, which is the finished the finished thing is 60 by 90 centimetres, so 60 centimetres wide and 90 centimetres long. It's all printed on 100% pure cotton. Um, I think I'm really, really pleased with this. It, the, 
cross actually looks shiny. It's not shiny because it's cotton, but it looks shiny. The way that Amy has designed it, it's got the light. I don't I have no idea how she's done this. It's got like the light reflecting on it. So it looks like textured glass, like it would if you'd actually made stained glass. So you've got the cross and then the, the rainbow again. And it's just beautiful, isn't it? But the sky, I mean, we've called it the sunrise because you've got the sunrise there, the grass, and then the dove at the bottom holding an olive branch. So it's just perfect, particularly for the moment, isn't it? Um, it's a really lovely thing. I've seen people with these panels before. They've made them for their local churches. You know, it's, it's, I suppose it's quite ideal at the moment with Easter coming up, but it's not Easter specific. I've seen people do it where they've made them into a blind or hung them in front of a door as part of a door curtain because it's just quite pretty to cover. And if you've got like an ugly black door, back door or something, they also, you don't have to make it into a wall hanging like this. They are great for the centre of quilts. So you could just use plain block colours and work around the edge of it, add borders and sashing. Or if you've got, you know, a nether quilt design, it's ideal for the centre of that. On the top of the panel, we've got some labels as well. Made with love by, handmade by, made with love and handmade. So if you want to um, personalise it, you could just write in a um, permanent pen your name or whatever on there. Morning, I love this. Would you say a beginner can manage it? Yes, you could, because you can go as much or as little as you want. And um, I made it up a couple of weeks ago, but then yesterday I was just preparing all the bits for the demo today. And I was thinking, actually, if you're a beginner to quilting or making a quilt, this is so manageable. So I took the, um, cleared the kitchen table off just to lay it all flat so I could um, lay it together and because it's just a small piece it's only 60 by 90 it's very manageable and easy to layer which is often the biggest problem with quilting because you can get it on a table when you're trying to layer and tack together a large quilt there's never a space to do it and then as I said you can do as much or as little quilting as you want or none at all you don't have to quilt it the lines are already printed there obviously when you quilt it it gives it a, a 3D appearance, so it makes all the bits stand out. And I quilted, honestly, along every single line, but only because it was quite nice, it's quite nice to do. But you don't have to, you could just quilt around the edge of the cross. So yes, yeah, of course it is, and I'm gonna go through with you as well, talk to you as part of this, how to bind it. How, and, and I've put tabs to hang it up, you can hang it up however you want. But it's a lovely gift for somebody as well. So in the pack, you get the panel but I also because I wanted part of you if any of you have bought any amber makes kits you'll know that we always try and teach you something with it at the same time so that when we create a kit for you obviously we Amy does a design that's just beautiful and I try to teach you something in it at the same time so the instructions here with a picture of the back of my house and it tells you all about working with a twin needle how you do it the different techniques that you need for whether you're doing curves or corners I talked to you a little bit about threading up, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then it goes through how to make the hanging tags, because it's tabs, which are on the, the top of there. Um, but you can put a sleeve on the back as well. And also how to mitre. And I've gone through in detail. There's photos of what, how you turn the corners, how you measure it, but also how you do the mitred corners. So when you bind the edge of a quilt, it's really nice if you can get your corners in a perfect mitre, and there's a really easy way to do that. But I've given you step-by-step -step photos of exactly how to do that. So in the kit, 1999, you get the panel that's 60 by 90 centimetres with the label, the panel's a bit bigger than that, but the actual finish size. So it's big enough because you should always have your quilt top bigger. It's easy if it's a little bit, you don't have to, but it's easier if it's a bit bigger when you quilt it and then you cut it down to size afterwards. And then you've got the labels across the top and you get the full instructions with photos as well for 1999. Now, you will also need for this a meter of black fabric. You don't have to have black. Uh, if you want, we have got plain black fabric, it is on the website. You don't have to have black. If you look at the finished quilt, the the meter, the meter covers the back, the binding and the tabs. Now, it doesn't have to be black. It could You could pick up one of the other colours in the quilt. So you could, well, any of them, red. I mean, the border here goes red, 
then a goldy colour, and then I've put black binding. So you could put a red border green, doesn't have to be black, but you need a metre of fabric for it. So, and none of the other bits are in there. We've just put the panel in the instructions. So on top of that, you'll need, you'll need wadding, and you need one metre by 70 centimetres. You can go for the, um, this one, the premium polyester craft wadding, which is just coming in now. Um, because it's not going to be something that gets masses of use, unless you use it for a, I don't know, picnic blanket or something, then the polyester wadding is fine. If you want to use a fusible wadding, that makes it easier to layer. We do sell that on the website, the H640, or is it H460? I don't remember which way around it is. H640 is a fusible one, you can use that instead, but you need a metre by 70 centimetres, or you could use a cotter wadding, depending on what you want. But if you're in... Um, you know, if you want to just keep the cost low, this is our um, most affordable wadding, and that's the right size. But very importantly, I made them buy these specially because we have got twin needles on the website, and um, and they didn't, and they weren't right. So they had a four millimeter gap, and they're also a ninety, which is used for jeans. They were too didn't like them. They're brilliant. The ones that we do have on the website that are the 4 mil 90, they're brilliant for twin needling um, denim and jeans and that kind of thing. But for this, I needed 3 mil. So I asked them, especially only on Monday as well, they only gave them a week, to buy these in. So we've got these in stock, £3.49. 3 mil, um, that, the 3 mil is the gap between the needles and they're 80, which is uh, the size of the point of the needle, which is perfect for just stitching on normal cotton it's a normal dressmaking weight and it's a universal which means it's like a un normal universal needle so it's got a very slightly rounded point so it's perfect for this this is the one that i use that's in the machine at the moment so if you want to do twin needling put these in that in your basket because that is the one that i use because i got them to buy them which is quite handy isn't it so where do we start let's move it all move it all away so where you start is you take, you cut your fabric into pieces. At the beginning of the instructions, I explained to you what size you need cutting it. So you need to cut the binding and the back in and the tabs and you cut them from your metre of fabric. And you lay your backing fabric right sides down. Or if it's plain like this, it doesn't really matter. But if you're using a print, right sides down. Then you put the wadding on top and then you put the panel on top. And I didn't cut the panel at all, as you can see. I'll move it across a bit, there we go. I didn't cut it, I just did it as is. So you can see that the, obviously the back is sticking out and the wadding's over there, but as long as the wadding and the backing, I'll, I mean, this is just how I did it, so I thought I'll just leave it, otherwise I might have trimmed it a bit. But as long as the backing and the wadding is sticking out beyond the edge, you're fine. Now, I used a fusible wadding for mine, so I've pressed this on. But then, because obviously it's only fusible on one side, and I had to tack the... So I've just... This is the beauty, if, if you're new to it. I All I did was I've tacked it across the centre, the, down the centre and across there, because I've used a fusible. If you haven't, I would say tack about every 20 centimetres or so, all the, way all the way down. That just holds it all into place. You could then pin it around the edges if you like, but that's what I did. And because this is a manageable size, if you're new to quilting, this is perfect because you can get it on a table, which is quite handy. So once, you, once you've done that, you've obviously cut your binding strips up, you cut your hanging tabs, put those to one side and we'll talk about those later. Then you need to be thinking about your machine. So if you don't want to use a twin needle, you can use a normal quilting needle. And I've said in the instructions, just so using a black or a charcoal thread. I wouldn't use a different colour for the quilting because um, the, the lines are black. I used a charcoal for mine actually, just because there were some areas that are more charcoal, but you can use either. But I, I mean, on it's your quilt, you can make whatever colour you want, but the black works the best. You could just stitch through the centre of the lines. You don't have to use a twin needle. I, as I said, quilted every single line, but honestly, because I was quite enjoying it, it, and as I was doing it, I thought, oh, I'll do another one. Or I'll just do another. Actually, no, the only bits I didn't do is the 
individual lines on these feathers I decided were very narrow and I didn't do them but I did do all around the edges of everything and um, when I did the eye it was too small for the twin needle so I did that as a single stitch I just changed my needle afterwards so you could start off if you're completely new to it just go around the edge of the cross and then think oh shall I do more then that's up to you you can do what you like now you could obviously you could use other threads as well so if you're just doing the well they're called leading in stained glass windows aren't they in reality because they'd be lead um you can use other colored threads so you could add more embellishment you could do quilting lines amongst some of the rainbow colors in the grass section or hills at the bottom you could do extra quilting within that so you know this is this is what I've made with it, but you need to make it your own. Create what you want with it. So I'm just showing you what I've done. So if you want to use the twin needle, and I love the twin needle, it's magic. I did a little practice. I'm going to show you my practice thing earlier, just to make sure I threaded it up properly. Here's my practice. Always have a practice one. But isn't it amazing how you can get exactly, well, it's not amazing really because it's two needles, but I think it's amazing that you get these beautiful parallel lines you'd never I when after I'd got into this I thought you know if you were just doing normal quilting you know how you just want to do sometimes you just do like diagonal cross hatching of a quilt or just vertical and horizontal lines or a few curves put a twin needle in fantastic and I didn't even use the walking foot because I couldn't be bothered to put it on to be honest and also I really wanted to be able to see what I was doing so and I was only practicing so I didn't use the walking foot with it because it's quite lightweight wadding and it worked fine but I suddenly thought for just normal quilting once you've got your head around the twin needle concept and you've worked out how to thread it up you get two lines for the price of one now when I did mine I used the same color thread in, so you work with two spools and a bobbin obviously and I use the same color thread in all of them but in the machine and I, this is a top tip I've used two different color threads I've used a charcoal and a black and I put black in the bottom and what I would say when you start with is use just to, to do your test piece if you've never done it before use two different colors it makes thread up a lot easier because the thing with the twin needles are now I, my machine at home is different and uh, make to this one every machine will thread up slightly different and I, I, I've given you a few tips in the instructions about how that works so with my machine at home I threaded each thread separately one went through the left discs and one went through the right discs with this machine um, you threaded them together and then separately at the end so if you haven't done it before put two different colors in just for threading up just to give yourself it's easier when you go ah yes so the left thread is red and the right thread is black just to practice and so that's why I've threaded this up with gray and charcoal but actually now they're sewn on my um, sample you can't tell the difference but you could sew it with black and charcoal and then on the bobbin thread as long as you've got your tension right so it doesn't come through um, you can do whatever color you like now interestingly when you do it you get straight lines on the back on the front but on the back with my machine at home you get a zigzag with this one you get little lines so if on the back of your quilt I'm going to show you can you see if I show you the back of my quilt it zigs it might on this because the different each machine works differently I've got a zigzag so if you don't want that zigzag effect then you could quilt it just using a normal fabric and then oh hang on did you get it you see I don't like really like showing people the back of my quilts to be honest because I haven't cut all the ends off very well but it is a zigzag effect on the back so if you don't want that because you're going to be seeing it then just quilt it with a normal fabric and then back it afterwards to cover that up but just be aware that you won't get straight lines on the back you'll only get them on the front so when you thread it up you need two spools of thread I've got a black and a grey one as I said now each machine works in a different way and you just need to, to read your manual if I move the machine in the wrong place now they don't like it when I move the machine, I forget that. Um, each machine works in a slightly different way, so just read your manual. But if you can't find, most machines will come with two spool holders. If yours doesn't, you can actually use the bobbin holder and put a bobbin thread. If you've only got one reel of black thread 
and you need to wind some of it onto a bobbin and use that as the other spool. So it's a good way of splitting a spool. So if you haven't got a second spool holder, I know this is quite a fancy machine, but even I've got a quite a basic one. The most machines come with two spool holders or you can put it on the bobbin or you can actually buy a separate spool holder that you put on your desk. So if your tension discs are separate, mostly you will thread the left thread, as in the one that's going to go through the left needle, will go through the left side of the tension discs, and the one that's going through the right needle will go through the right side. With this machine, they went through together. It's important that the threads come off in different directions, which your manual may or may not tell you. So with my machine, one had to come off clockwise and one had to come off anti-clockwise. It's to stop them getting tangled. But anyway, just play with it. Just thread it up, have a go, read the manual, if your manual doesn't tell you, just try threading them both together and through different needles. Unfortunately, sadly, um, you can't use your needle thread if you've got one on your machine. It won't thread both of them, so you do have to do them yourself. So you put one thread through the left needle and one through the right needle. And then you catch the, bot the bobbin thread in the way that you would normally do with your machine by um, winding the needles down and back up again, or however your machine works, and then pull the threads out. Because it's important they don't get tangled, but just if your machine, if you've lost your manual, have a go at threading it together and just try different ways. And as I said, if you use two different colours, it, it is a bit easier. So when you've done that, then have a go at the little sample. Here's my sample piece. So you can just make sure it works. Now I'm going to show you on here how to do different things. So um, obviously on here we've got corners, we've got curves, we've got straight lines, we've got a message from Susan, <laughs> got a nice message from Susan who says, I love watching Rebecca, she is so, <laughs> so knowledgeable, she's not, she just makes it up, no, she just makes it up, <laughs> just, how do you know if your machine can use a twin needle, I have the Elna 560, well, to be honest, I this was a question that I had for myself when I was wondering, God, I hope mine does. I think pretty much most machines will work with one. Just give it a go. Um, because every machine is different. So with this machine, one of the threads goes through, often you have like a little, oh, I can't remember what it's called, the little bit that the thread goes through behind the needle. I can't remember, no, you need thread guide, I think. One goes behind it, one doesn't. I would just give it a go. As I said, if you've got separate tension discs, thread one thread through the left and one through the right and put the left one through the left needle. This one, which is, you know, your really fancy expensive machine, you threaded both threads together and then threaded them through the needle. So I can't see why machines wouldn't. Your only issue will be the spool. But as I said, you can use the bobbin spool as your extra spool holder. But they don't, but not all of them have the extra one. But you can use the bobbin one. So I don't know. I, sh I should have had to go because I've got a really old singer. I should have had to go with that. I bet it does. You've been able to buy twin needles for years. So I can't see why not. It's not that your machine knows. In fact, I have no idea how it works. Your machine doesn't know it's got a twin needle. You don't set it. It's not like um, there's a setting that you press t the twin needle. I think some of the fancy machines do have that setting. But normal machines don't. Mine certainly didn't. So it just sort of works. Anyway, so back to this. Back to this. Back to this. So you're going to have corners, right angles and curves, etc. You can't turn a corner with a twin needle. So one downside is you, can't, you have to thread it yourself. And you can't turn a corner, but there is a way to do it. And the reason you can't turn the corner, because normally when you turn a corner, you leave the needles down, you lift the foot, you turn... And you keep going. Now, if you do that, you break your needles because you can't turn two at the same time. It just doesn't work. So I'm going to show you on here. We're going to start off. Now, start wherever you want. Mostly, obviously, with quilting, you start in the centre and work out. So I would suggest that. When I started mine, I just went around the edge of here. And I thought, well, then I'll fill those in. And then I did that. It's best to start from the centre out because it just pushes the fabric out if, if needs be. It's a small piece, so it's not crucial. But... Um, practice first going around corners on your practice piece before you start the real thing but I've done my practice so we're fine as I showed you earlier so 
it's not a very big piece so it's quite easy to get underneath right now so i'm going to start a little bit away from the corner now luckily this two mil needle is designed no this quilt is designed to fit the three mil needle not the other way around so i would just hand wind those ne needles down and they will sit can you see on the edges of those lines that's like magic that put the foot down and then just start sewing let's go slow oh that worried me got a light came on then but it's, that's okay, it's a real life. So just start sewing. Now go slow to start with. And just make sure as you're going along, I mean, when you're starting off, go slow. Make sure those needles are going on either side of the lines. If you go off slightly, don't worry. If you look at my quilt really closely, I've gone off slightly here and there quite a lot. And that's fine because it's yours. It doesn't really matter. No one will notice when it's hanging up. Um, now, when you get to the corner, because we're going to have to turn now, um, go all the way to the end of the corner and stop. Now, reverse back two stitches. And I say two because that's enough for this three mil, if it was more. So you need to reverse back to the amount you're going to turn. Now, this is the, well, not tricky bit, but this is the bit you have to think about. Raise the needles so they're just above the fabric because if they get caught in the fabric, they'll break. And this does seem really weird because you would never pivot like this, but it's the only way to do it. Lift the foot and turn it round and try not to move the fabric too much. But you will have to move it a bit. But it's fine. And then you place the needles. If you, you have to kneel down a bit. We're not, you just bend down a bit. Put the needles, not kneel, just bend down a bit. Put the needle, well, just so you can look and see. Then the needles will then go back in at the top corner. Put the foot back down and then stitch along to the next one. I'm going to stitch all the way along so you can see. Right, so when you get to the corner, go, you know, and if you want to be absolutely accurate, do it by hand, because obviously you've got, you can control the speed. You stop at the end, go back two stitches, one, two, lift the needles. Oh, no, lift the needles first. Now what you can do, I don't know whether you're supposed to do this, but this is what I did with some corners where it got a bit bulky. Make sure the needles are out of the way because you really don't want to break those. And you can twist it with the foot down. It stops everything shifting. You need to lift the foot up again to make sure the fabric is um, flat, but it does help to keep it slightly still. Then you put the needles back down at the beginning of that line again, and then stitch down to the next one. I don't know whether the needles will break if you forget to lift them because I haven't tried that because I only had one twin needle and I didn't want to risk it. So, I think, but it wouldn't work. I don't know whether they'd break or not. I can't be absolutely certain because I didn't want to risk it. Um, and then you can, I mean, well, I've shown you already, you can reverse stitch so you can finish that. So let me cut off the thread there. Obviously, you'd carry on. Um, and I'm going to show you my corner. So it looks different to a normal corner. So if you can come in on here, he's just, he's just zooming in. One moment. One moment. Just talk amongst yourselves for a second while Elliot zooms in. Okay, so now you can see on the corner, you get almost like a little line across. It doesn't look exactly as neat as a normal because you get the, a little line that goes across, but it gives you actually quite a nice little edge to your corner. So if you do it that way, and if you're like me, you get carried away and you do the whole thing, by the time you've got to the last corner, you'll be brilliant. You see, now look, I've gone off a bit there. So it does happen. It does happen, but you know, it's a stained glass window. The leading isn't always completely straight. So don't worry about it too much if you do go slightly off. Right, you've also got on here curves, quite a lot of curves. So what should we do? Should we do the bird? Um, the question from Maureen, what is the question? How do you finish the sewing? Do you backstitch up and down, finish or pull through to the back? Well, I know you're supposed to pull through to the back, but honestly, I did it once and it took me so long, I've never done it since. So, um, and, and yes, you should. If you were entering a quilt competition 
and you want it to be really neat, you should always pull your threads to the back and knot them together. But honestly, that takes such a long time. So what I do is um, lock stitch. So some machines have a lock stitch where you could, it will just go up and down. But if you don't, you can just hold the fabric and go up and down a few times. Or sometimes I just reverse two stitches and back again. I just don't think it notices that much. I know properly you should thread all your threads through to the, the back. And I guess if you were using a colour that might show up, you'd want to do that. But personally, I do a couple of reverse stitches just because... I did once do all that tying and it just put me right off quilting. I just didn't want to do it. So but it's up to you. That's how I do it. Now I'm going to show you how to do a curve. Let's do the bird. So just think about where you're going to start so that you can start and finish. So like if I was doing this bird, I would start here, go all the way round and finish there so that I'm in the place then to do his wing. But obviously that doesn't work with everything because you can't always start and stop in the place that you want to. But if you can, then do that. So I'm going to start here. If I just So again, when you, if you bend down a bit, you've got to get those needles. You may as well start off right, even if you go off slightly. If you bend down a bit, you can make sure that the needles go right either side of those lines. Then put the foot down. So I don't start, I mean, I don't reverse to start, obviously, because I'm going to go probably go over those stitches. So when you're doing curves, you just, in this exactly the same way as you would norm, do any normal stitching, you just curve it. Now, if you find that the curve's a bit tight, you don't, you can just lift the foot and move it slightly. It's okay to move it slightly with the twin needle, you just can't turn a complete corner. And you know, and you obviously, you need to think about what foot you've got in. Most feet, I mean, this is only a three millimetre gap. Most feet will fit a twin needle, the, the gap in the feet. So just check that. So this, the bottom of this bird, it's a little bit tighter. So I do need to move it very slightly. You will get better at it and you'll end up like me going, oh, I'm actually, I was only... In fact, I did think at one point, oh, I'm only going to do the edge around the edge of that cross. It'll look fine in the photo. But actually, actually I really enjoyed the process because you, it's like you're getting um, two lines for the price of one. So it just, it will, so it will actually do curves really nicely. So if you think about your own, you've got to think about, oh, now that's, What's the edge of the bird and what's the... You've got to think, oh yes, that's the edge of the wing, or not the bird. Um, if you think about other quilting you do, now you've got your twin needle and you've had to go on this, um, all the quilting you can do, because it really gives um, a very slight ridged effect. Because there's only three mils between the lines, you get a really nice ridged effect. Right. Now I'm going to end up with a corner here, so I'm going to have to lift the needles. And I actually found this really easy. I don't know whether you're supposed to do You do, just because it does keep the fabric still, you will need to lift the foot when you before you start again because the fabric might be slightly twisted and you don't want the back to be twisted as well. But it does help to keep the fabric still when you're doing that. I did read, because I sort of worked out how to do this, I did read lots and lots of different people's tips and advice to see, you know, whether other people did it differently, but pretty much this is how everyone does it. You know, sometimes when you make something up yourself, you think, oh, I wonder if I'm doing that right, and whether everyone else does that, but this is how they do it. And I think I made up the keeping the foot in. So when I finish, I honestly, I do a couple of reverse stitches, which you probably shouldn't do, but I hate tying off ends or a couple of lock stitch, which is basically stitching up and down in the same place. And the thread cutter works though. I was very pleased to see that. It's just the thread, the threader doesn't work. Right. So there's my bird. And then you can just cut the ends off. You'll end up on the back with loads and loads of them. So it really is up to you how you decide you want to do it. I said I didn't quilt along these lines. <laughs> I think I actually maybe I had actually got a bit bored by them. 
I just went round the edges and also it's quite intricate going in and out of these although I did quilt around these but when I got to the eye so you could maybe just quilt along the lines of the um, feathers with a single needle or you could do it in a different colour that's up to you I mean you could put you could use all coloured threads you could do lots and lots of different things with this you know this is how I, I've done it as a very simple I've twin needled either side of the um, the leading it makes it slightly raised but it works beautifully so let me show you what the back looks like so all I've got I mean this is where you can see I've got two spools of thread because I've got I have got black in the bottom but I've got one spool of charcoal in the top um, you just get this sort of slightly zigzag effect but if you don't want to see that then just back it afterwards and as you can see from this the way that Amy has designed it to make the light fall on it differently is some of the lines are very black and some of the lines like here are quite grey and that's so that it looks like the light is bouncing off it um, so that's why actually if you do do a spool of black and a spool of grey it works really well it doesn't really show up but it makes it just a little bit softer so that is how you do the whole twin needling now everything I've just said all the different bits of advice about turning corners threading up um, discs needle threaders and stuff that's all in the instructions so i just wanted to explain when you have finished the whole thing as much as you want to do um the next thing to do is swap to a single needle i'll do that in a minute and then i've done this in advance you shouldn't really do this before you'd finish quilting but i just wanted to get ahead so with a single needle down the center of the outer black line so i've sewn that already i mean to be honest on a quilt this size you could sew it at the beginning i did because you you can pretty much get it flat pretty also i've used a fusible wadding but sew in the center of this outer black line this just makes it easier when you're cutting it then what you do is you find yourself a cutting mat i'm going to just get a big one off the floor talk amongst yourselves i'll be back be back <laughs> okay there we go right now I've done my instructions in um, metric I don't know why yes now do we have a rotary cutter in here behind my thingy oh yeah right um now I what I did was I cut a centimeter outside the inside line um, because I was doing it in metric but if you're doing it in imperial a centimeter is three-eighths of an inch but I'm just going to cut it at a I think that's a quarter that's fine so the reason I've done it on the inside line is that it gives you that little bit of extra space that when you then sew the binding on you can be sure that you're covering that black line it's just the way it works but you could cut it quarter of an inch it doesn't really matter so line it up and then cut it all the way around this is so satisfying because you've got all of this bits hanging out and it's just really nice i'm gonna have to move the machine sorry Elliot. he sets up the machine so he can see it on his camera and i've moved it um This is why you sew around the outside. I'm cutting it very close because I want because of where I want the binding to be. But um, if you by sewing through the outside line, it keeps all the layers still. There we go. Oh, I've got too much stuff on here. This is like my sewing desk at home. You get to the point on your sewing desk where you can't actually cut anything because there's so much stuff on it and then eventually you have to tidy it up and then wish you'd done it at the beginning. So the good thing about this panel is that there is extra space around the edge which means that you can sew it together bigger and then trim it and then all the labels that are along the top you can um, write your name on or sew one on the back of so if you were making it for somebody or maybe you are making it for your local church you want to hang it up there you can put your name on so everyone know that you made it which is very important i'm going to cut it all the way around 
that's the time. Okay, that's fine. I will cut it all the way around. So if you do a centimetre or about a quarter of an inch, that's fine. It will work with the binding strips. Right. Actually, I might just cut that down that side. So cut it all the way around. I'm actually going to leave the bottom because I don't want it to get boring. And then you end up with that. <laughs> I'll just get some scissors for that bit. I'm not cutting the bottom just because it gets a bit boring. So what we're going to do now is... If you want to do hanging loops, if you want to hang your quilt up, you could put a sleeve on the back. So you can see mine hang up. I've got loops and I threaded mine through um, a piece of pole or dowel. So if you want to do hanging loops, the instructions are in there for hanging loops. You cut five strips of fabric, measurements all in the instructions. You take one... Take one strip of fabric, fold it in half lengthways, sew it together down the length, turn it right sides out and then top stitch it and then fold it in half and tack it together across the top. Now this obviously you can use for lots of different things this skill if you want to know how to do hanging loops. You make five of those in total. So what you've got to do now is change your needle. Um, right, now I've got to unscrew it. Nice message from Wendy. Morning all. What a gorgeous panel. Thanks, Wendy. Oh, loving the twin needle demo. Oh, that's the wrong screw. It is fun. That's nice. You're giving me the coast. <laughs> it is fun, honestly. You, what you do is you take a deep breath and you sit down in front of your machine. You get your manual thing. I've got to do this. I've just got to do this. I've got to do it. And then you just do it. And then, well, what's the worst that will happen? You break your needle. Now I've lost the packet. I'm going to put it in there. Oh, the packet's in my bag. Um, but, you know, what? that's the worst thing that will happen is that the needle breaks. And actually, I didn't break mine, which is quite... Oh, I often, I often break my needles because I sew quite fast. Yeah, maybe, maybe by two. Right, so now I need to remove one of the threads. And then I'll have to thread it back up again. But, but you, you're not going to keep doing this, by the way. This is just like um, a one-off. You start off with all the twin needle in and then you go back to single again so Hannah said to me why does her thread keep snapping well there's all sorts of things rubbish thread Okay, so if it's decent thread, you threaded your machine up wrong, your tension's wrong, change your needle. The first thing I'd say to anyone with any problems is the first thing that I would always do if things go wrong is change your needle. And then if it's not that, I'll start doing everything else. And then take it to the sewing machine shop and get the man to look at it, the, the person. But it often it's really weird that the needle can affect all sorts of things. Right. Now, in terms of good practice, I will make sure this works. You should always do that. If you change threads or needles or anything, just give it a little go, because it's really annoying when it doesn't work. Well, when you commit to your stitching. Yay, look at that, it works. So, take, to do your tab, um, you sew it together down the length. Oh, I've got it on. I, was, I thought I was on super slow. Sew it together down the length. Just like this. 
Go backwards. See, I'm going a bit faster now. I'm a little bit more confident on the single. And then you turn it right sides out. Um, I top stitched down the edges just to make it neat and then tacked it across the top. I won't make all of them because I really want to show you. Oh, let me not lose my screwdriver. Um, by my turn because I promised that. What you do next is on the back of the quilt, this is how. So if you're using hanging tabs at all, is. Um, I positioned mine two centimetres from the end because one centimetre had the binding in it and then I wanted a little bit of a gap. So you put one that end, one that end two centimetres and then space the, uh, put one in the centre. I'm not measuring this obviously because you can't see a thing because it's all black. Um, I'm not measuring it but you will and then one either side of that and then tack them into place so you can either do that by hand or you can sew them by machine into place but within the seam allowance so it doesn't get seen i know this seems like a really odd way to do it but you need to put the hanging tabs on first so just trust me on that but anyway that's all in the instructions so i won't put those on now because i'm trying to save a bit of time next is the binding now you need i've worked out how many binding strips and the measurements and all the details for that are in the instructions take your strips of fabric which are cut off width of fabric. Woff means width of fabric cut from selvage to selvage. When you join them together you don't want these selvages because um, they don't, they're, they're a tighter weave and they won't look very neat. So cut them off both ends first. Like that. Off both ends. Now we're going to join them on the diagonal so if you've done this before, just bear with. If you haven't, it's quite useful. Um, right, so take one piece, right sides up, which doesn't make any difference if it's a plain back fabric, but if you're using a pattern, it does. Take your other one, right sides down, so the right sides together at a lovely right angle, like that. Um, if you want to be absolutely certain it's a right angle, put it on your cutting mat and line up the lines. And then put a pin at one end and, a, and the other. Ooh, whoa. It's falling because it's a bit heavy. And then what you should do, difficult with black fabric I know, is draw a line. What I need is a white. You can use like a white chalk pen from one corner to the other. If you lift this up slightly, you can see where the other corner is. So draw a line from one corner to the other using on a black fabric like a white chalk pen or something. Um, I'm going to just sew mine, but don't do that. Do mark the line and then you'll get it right. But I'm not, I'm going to just sew it for speed. So start in that top left corner and sew it and then sew all the way down to the bottom right corner. I mean, I can pretty much see this, but if you haven't done it before, then do do that. Cut it off. Right, take the pins out and then cut off the seam like the bit you don't, so that's the bit outside. Cut that off to about five mils, quarter of an inch. And the reason you do this is now when I turn it right sides out, I've got a really nice join. And when you then might, when you're using this binding around something, it's really hard to see on this black fabric, but the bulk is now spread across. So the bulk, the, se the bulk is the seam, the seam allowance is going across that way and down that way. If I join them straight on, you've got the bulk going across the front and the back and you will get a slight little lump in your binding and nobody wants a lump in their binding because it doesn't look as nice. So join your strips together in that way. Now, when you come to do your quilt, this is what I wanted to show you. So I'm going to start near an edge, start on this edge. The best place to start, I always start halfway down one side. Only because visually, I think that your eye is probably drawn to the top and the bottom, less so to the side. I also, I say the center, but I always try to start off center because it's a bit measured isn't it that it's in the center so just a little bit of the way down 
I'll have to cut this one off because um, otherwise I can't show you this. Should have done this one before. I was trying to save time. So don't cut it like this. Use a rotary cutter. Right. There we go. Um, now make sure, so find your join, make sure it's right sides down. Pin one end of it about to the centre. Right. Okay, so pin it together all the way down. And we're going to start because we, we need to join the ends when we get back all the way round. The, if you've got a bit more fabric to join, it's a little bit easier. So I would start, I don't know, it's about 10 centimetres down. Put a pin there and then you remember where you want to start because it's, if you keep that pinned up, it just keeps it out of the way while you're sewing. So I'm sure, do you know, whenever I'm on with other presenters, demonstrators, they don't ever seem to get in quite as much mess as I do. I don't know, they must be more organised or something. Why is that? So you just start stitching. I used a one centimetre seam allowance. And you stitch all the way to the end. <laughs> Hannah said, do I have to make that noise? I do always do that when I'm sewing. Just make this sort of, I don't know. Didn't you do that when you're driving or is that just me? Right. Okay, so what you need to do, now I haven't said to mark this before you do it because I find that when you sew binding on, even though you've pinned it into place, it seems to shift down a bit. So stop a little bit before the end, which is probably um, about three centimetres. Now you need to stop stitching a centimetre up from the bottom. So I always put a pin there and then I'll measure up from there with my tape measure. There we go. You do need a white chalk pencil. So measure a centimetre up from the bottom edge and just put a pin there. Or you can mark it with a pencil if you've got like a chalk pencil. I just put a pin to be honest. But now you need to go slow because you really don't want to stitch over this pin. So stitch all the way to the pin. If you've done a mark, you don't need to quite go so slow. Take the pin out. I, I think we needed one more. Pick, keep the needle down in the fabric, lift the foot, and then pivot it diagonally and stitch from there to the corner. Really easy to see. That's why you don't need to mark the line. You only need the point because you can see the corner and it's only a centimetre long. So it's easy. Do a little um, little reverse stitch across the end, cut the thread and then bring it out. Right. So what you do now, chuck all your binding out of the way. Now you do need to use an iron at this point and I'm not going to because I'll run out of time. But fold it upwards so it's exactly parallel this is really important and you can either do this by lining that up on your cutting mat and then line that up and then you can um difficult because it keeps falling off the edge all you can do with the ruler and then press that down i'll just do that with my fingers for now and to be sure it stays in place pin it in place here. Remember you're going to be sewing down there so don't pin anywhere near here or you'll sew through the pins. All in the instructions there are photos of every stage of this so you'll know how to do it. Now bring it all the way back over and fold it so that the top fold, can you see this here, is level with the top edge of that and press it and then Pin it in place. I did it again. Make a little <laughs> They're laughing at me. Do, 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 do. It's a bit like going, isn't it, when you're concentrating. See, now that pin you is fine because you're not going to go over it. And then you start stitching right at the top edge using the same seam allowance. I know this seems a bit like, oh, you know, you've got to do this four times. You've got to take it in and out and in and out. But 
it's um, you, you will get a perfect corner. And then you go all the way down to the other end and do exactly the same thing. But because I'm about to run out of time, right, so I'm going to just show you what happens. And you do that at every corner. Now, when you then... Um, when you unfold it like this, you've then got a perfect mitered corner. Could you see? With a perfect line. Do that all the way around. When you get back to the beginning, you can just turn this end over and overlap, or you can sew them together, or you can do it diagonally. It's up to you. But this is how you do a mitered corner. When you've then finished that, turn it all over to the wrong side. Oh, it's really it's a nightmare using black fabric, isn't it? Fold, fold the long edge over and turn it so it just covers that line of sewing. And then do the same and pin it into place. And then do the same with the other side. And then when you get to the corner, you can just fold that as well. Let me just put a pin in, then you can see. I'll move my hands out of the way, and then you can see. Um, da, da, da. Um, now you can see that you've got a really nice mitered corner on the back. Now, I always slip stitch these down. You can machine stitch if you want. If you, f um, f if you fold it so it goes slightly beyond that, you can then stitch in the ditch all the way around here. If you haven't done it before, I would slip stitching on the back because you've got to, it's quite hard to stitch in the ditch, which basically means in this seam and catch the back. That's totally up to you, but it's a little bit easier to slip stitch it by hand, I would say. And then you do that all the way round. And obviously then you will have four corners that look exactly like that. But you can use that method for everything. And I, sa I said at the beginning, that's the whole point in, uh, in the Amber Makes kits is we always try with everything that you learn a technique as well as make something nice, hopefully. There we go. Now there's lots of you who've got this kit in your basket because you'll be watching. So I would suggest um, you do need to check out Right, in your bundle, you get, <laughs> I've lost the panel. No, I haven't lost the panel. Yeah, honestly, this is why you normally have a presenter because the guest person then doesn't mind that they've actually lost everything. So in the bundle, you get the panel. Your panel is slightly different than the one I was making with because it got Amy to change the label so you can put your name on them. The one I was just working with didn't have space to put your name in, but this is your panel. We always do test ones and I go, oh, should we change that? Should we change that? So this one you get a space to write your name in. So you get the panel and it is 60 wide, 90 centimetres high. You can use it for a stained glass wall hanging or you can use it for your back door or a blind or a curtain or the centre of a quilt or anything you want. You also get the instructions with all the stuff that I was telling you, it tells you everything, all the ingredients you need and the method. Because it's like making a cake, isn't it really? And you can't eat it. Um, plenty of st stock, hopefully, but a lot has already gone, so you do need to check out. Um, everything I told you about working with a twin needle, threading it, going around corners, doing curves, all of that's covered in here. And all the details and the photos about joining binding strips, going around corners, mitering, and all of that is in there. So all of that's in there already. So you get the panel and that. And if you want to have a go at the twin needling, um, maybe get two. Although I have to say, I and I am a needle breaker. It is a technical term. Um, I didn't break mine. So, but it, you know, if you want to give it a go, maybe get two. People, people like Hannah. They, I, I do often break them as long as you're careful. No, I've not lost it. No, I'd lost my needles packet. But this is uh, the needle. I had my own needle and I made them by the same. Well, it looks a bit dirty there, doesn't it? It's got like a red mark on it. I'm using the dirty cutting mat. There we are. That's better, isn't it? Clean. So this is um, a three mil gap. 
and it's an 80 needle, which means it's sort of general cotton fabric. I used a 2.5 stitch length, but you can use more or less, up to you. I would say if you're doing very tight curves, reduce it a little bit. I usually quilt with a three mil, um, a three stitch length, but I use two and a half for this. So um, this is the right size and it, it does, well, it fitted in this machine. It fit, I mean, these, these needles fit in pretty much all machines. Now, obviously you can buy twin, you can also buy triple needles. We'll cover that another time. Yeah, we'll do that another time. You do need three spool holders for that, but you can get triple needles as well. We'll have to do that another time. But think of the decorative effects you can do then. But if you, we have got on the website, lots and lots of different threads in different colors and effects and all glorious things. So if you want to embellish it with other colors, then do have a look on the website because we do have all of those as well. So I hope that all made sense. Um, you can always message me or message me on uh, Amber Makes if you've got any questions and please, do send put on our, on the website on ambermakesco.com. Um, please put in photos of your finished ones because we'd love to see them. All right, and oh, and you could send them to the Sewing Street page as well. We'd love to see your finished makes. Um, anyway, anyway, I will be back in a couple of minutes for sewing room tools. Even more lovely, exciting things to sh share with you. Lots of tools and gadgets. Um, just things that you need and love. So you'll enjoy that. So I'll see you back here in just a couple of minutes. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hi, I'm Debbie Harris, and I'm so excited to be one of the new guest designers here on Sewing Street. I live and work in Melton Mowbray in Leicestershire, where I run my own knitting and sewing business called Mabel and Deb. I specialise in sewing and knitting and crocheting, and I've been doing all of those three things from being a little girl when my mum taught me all things knitting, crochet and sewing. Started off just crocheting little chain stitches and granny squares and then actually patchwork sewing little hexagons and they're still my favourite shape to sew now. I used to be a school teacher for over 20 years I was teaching in classrooms um, and just had the knitting and the crochet and sewing as a background hobby but now I get to do this as, as my job and I'm absolutely passionate about it and really want to share all that passion and excitement with you guys. Um, a, a tip that I think is worth sharing with you is always use quality materials. So whether that's your fabrics or your threads or wool, the difference in the quality of your materials can really make a difference to your finished project. And always use the right tools, so whether it's a rotary cutter or a pair of scissors that are specially made for that job, that too can make all the difference. My claim to fame in 2020 was winning, being one of the winners of the Great British Make Off here on Sewing Street when I did my debut um, sewing demonstration in November last year. And it was just a wonderful experience and I'm so excited to be here on my Sewing Street journey with you all, bringing you lots of tips, techniques, and looking forward to doing lots of exciting projects with you throughout the year. So lovely to meet you and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. 
We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix... There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. And welcome back to Sewing Street. Now, a lot of you have messaged and asked me, um, where can they get the pattern for my pinafore? Sadly not, if only, because if I could have a pattern, I'd have made a few. I bought it from a shop about two years ago. Joy it was. I don't even know you can buy them. It's a shame, actually, because they have them in mustard. And I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll take the navy one home, make sure I like it. And then when I went to get back to get the mustard one, it sold out. So, sadly, you can't buy it. You can't make it. You have to buy it. But I don't know whether they do them anymore. It's a really nice pinafore as well, actually, because it's got really big pockets and then it's got like an elastic bit at the back, so it fits really well. Just saying. Mm. I've got an email from, from Donna. Oh, she said, I want to th thank you for your ha demonstration on half square triangles using strips. That was for the Wren Bird of the Month cushion. That was so cool when I learned that. I know it's really, I'd, I'd not heard of it before, so I was quite impressed that you could do HSTs with strips. I love an HST. Anyway, I've got loads of things for you. Now, I'm really pleased about the Janet Clare bundle. This is lovely. Um, I always really like Janet Clare fabrics by Moda. She has done some beautiful ones with whales all over them. When I first started working on Simply Sew magazine many, many years ago, the first collection I did was with Janet Clare fabrics, and I've loved them ever since. Last year the year before, in the days when we were allowed out, and I went to the International Quilt Festival at Houston with Ian, the Lord of Buying, we bumped into Janet Clare in the queue at Houston Airport. And because the queue was so long, we spent ages talking to her. It was really nice. So I was a fan before, and now I'm a super fan. Anyway, this is gorgeous fabric. Obviously, it's Moda, so we know it's quality. Designed by Janet Clare. Now, she is known, she often does designs fabric using this blue and cream colour palette. But the colour, the designs are just lovely. There's a lot of attention to detail, real quality. I mean, she really knows her design and colours. And there's always a really good balance between different sizes of print. Now, in here, there are 42, 42 or 40. Not even that, 26. 26. I'm thinking of a charm pack. It's not a charm pack. There are 26 fat quarters now if you don't know a fat quarter is 20 by 22 inches um one of this is an american one so it's 18 by 22 inches because an american one is half a yard cut and cut in half so that's half of 36 18 so 18 by 22 inches this has only been on once before i'm going to show you i'm only allowed to unfold one um what a fat quarter looks like and this is beautiful this one this is lovely stripes but So it's called the blues. 
because it has been inspired by the blues music and it's blues as well. So that's what a fat quarter looks like and you get 26 of them. It's beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. I'm only allowed to unfold one of them. I said to Hannah, can I open them? She goes, only if you can get them back, which is fair enough because because we have to put them back nicely. So I, we will look at all of them. Actually, why have I got this cut in that? Yeah, I'll just, just, take, just take that off. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean that to be quite so aggressive. I thought, I thought I'd left it there since the last one, but actually, I thought I'd put it there. No, it keeps moving. It like twiddles around. So you get that lovely striped one. That's like a confetti one. This is like... That's like music bars and another one with little hashes. Isn't the colourway lovely? It's And it's not a solid colour either. It's very mottled. It's like a navy midnight mottled. Oh, there's only six of these. And there's an almost a plain, but not because it's mottled. But look at the colour. It's denim, chambray, midnight, ivory, cream, all mixed together. So if you had a pattern for a, um, a quilt using fat quarters, this is absolutely perfect. All of the colours, all the patterns come in the different colourways from the midnight blue to the deep chambray to the lighter chambray. Isn't it lovely? And there's only three of these. And then there's um, creams. Well, yeah, they are lovely, lovely ivory creams and all the prints. We do have some of these by the half metre, but not all of them. So if you have a look on the website, if there's any of if you like, then you can um, have a look on the website. So you can see how they are inspired by music. Look at that one. It's, it's like music, only it's not I just... Well, it hasn't got notes on, but it's got the lines and the little dots. So it is... It's not actual notes, but it makes you feel like that. I love, I love that one. It's just a beautiful... Janet, Janet Clare is an absolute genius at colours. I don't know how she does it. Look at this. Do we have this one by the half metre, Hannah? Because I'd quite like that one. That's beautiful, isn't it? And it's such a lovely colour. It looks like a... Um, it looks like kind of a bleached denim love that one the blues oh it's just it's just classy that's what it is it's classy well let me just fold that one back up now fantastically even better news it's on split pay it's 99.99 for all of the fat quarters and um if you want to buy it on split pay you can buy two equal payments of 49.99 one will be taken out now and one in a month's time, but you will still be sent it now. You don't have to wait. And it's interest free. So you just have the, it's just the convenience of paying it over two months rather than having to pay any interest on that. So it means you can spread the cost a little bit, which so if you want something that's a bit more expensive, but you think that's fine, I can pay for it in a couple of months, but well, you know what Sewing Street's like, a couple of months it'll have sold out. Well, it's sold out in about five minutes. So it saves you missing out on things if you want to spread the cost a bit. That's not bad, is it? That almost looks like it did when it started. Right, I just moved that to one side. Right, I'm going to show you best press now. Right, the iron. Now we did, if you were with me at eight o'clock, which is quite a long time ago, um, we showed the iron then. Now this is, an, don't think of this as an iron. Oh, guy ironing. This is for sewing. This is for pressing, not ironing. You can use it for ironing, obviously, but if you think of it as pressing, then um, it is brilliant because it's cordless or not, depending on what you want. So if you move this little switch, 
it's suddenly cordless, which is fantastic when you're sewing because you want to be able to get into corners and round bits and that cord gets in the way. Obviously it's rechargeable, you will have to plug it back in at some point. But you can, if you want then, if it's run out of charge, you can just put it back in, push the lever back down and then you've got its cord on. So it's up to you how you use it. What's great about it, it has a very, I can't touch it because it's actually on, a very sharp point, which means that you can really get into, you know when you're um, pressing out the corner of something, or a box corner, or you've got to get maybe a little quarter of an inch seam allowance you need to press, it's got that nice tight end. I mean obviously it's got all the temperatures from hot cotton to the cooler um, polyesters, you can have steam, non-steam, it's got the spray, so everything that a normal iron would have. But I think it's the cordless factor. I mean, it's a 2,600 watt, which is a really good watt. You know this is going to have a good lot of power behind it, but it is perfect for sewing. So that's that one. That's the iron, which is fantastic. But if you use it with best press now you know what it's like when you've bought one of these beautiful fat quarter packs and your fabric is folded up you've then got to remove the creases and sometimes that's really hard to do but best press is perfect for that it comes in two flavors um scent free which is the no flavor so if you don't want any smell at all that's the scent free i'm going to show how it works in a minute that's eleven ninety nine. It's just scent free, and then number two is lavender vanilla. Ooh, now I like both of those. Oh, I think you actually have to turn it on to make it work. Right, I'm just gonna have a smell first. Oh, that's beautiful. Actually, do you know what you could use this as a perfume or as a room spray? This is that is really nice. It really is lavender and vanilla. Anyway, Best Press is, does two things. It's like a clear starch, but it isn't starch. It doesn't leave that kind of flaky residue. So if you're using, I mean, a lot of patchworkers, even when they're using cotton fabric, which doesn't fray as much, um, they use it to, it gives it a, a bit more substance and stability so that it's easier to cut and sew with. It doesn't make it super stiff like starch, but it just makes it easier. It's particularly good if you're cutting on the bias. So say you're cutting bias strips from fabric, which means that the fabric has more stretch on it. Or if you're cutting half square triangles, which are on the bias, and it stops it stretching so much, it gives it more stability, but it is much easier to cut and sew if you spray with best fair. So it will get the creases out e more easily. If you buy the lavender and vanilla one, wow, that smells beautiful. Honestly, it is just beautiful. I, I, and then, you know, if quite often if you if I make something, I tend to s spray it with something and it does it does make it smell really nice, really, really nice. But it's brilliant for that starch. And a lot of people, you know, used to always spray fabric with starch, but it does leave a residue, whereas this best press doesn't. It will make sewing and cutting a lot easier because it just makes your fabric feel a little bit stiffer, which makes it easier. So let me show you how it works. And it's a, it's a pump action, it's not an aerosol, which is nicer, isn't it? So say you've bought one of these fat quarter thingies and it's got all these creases in. It's got a wet patch, that's the bit that I sprayed earlier. <coughs> yeah, it, it, won't, it won't mark it. So should we spray this one because it's my favourite flavour? Quite nice. Quite nice, quite nice. And then you just give it a good press with your brand new iron. Yeah, so the areas that I have pressed with the best press come out much quicker. Now, any of you who have ever tried to um, press, oh, this smells amazing, because now all the smell's coming up. Any of you who have ever tried to press the creases out of a fat quarter? So there's the bit that I didn't spray, and you can see the creases are there. But the bit that I did, and it's just, but it does, it's hard, it is, oh, it's, you just can't see it, can you? You can't, it's a real shame. But this is looser, and this is much stiffer. So say you wanted to hem something, let me just, let's get the squirks, I don't think I got the edge. 
I love this. I might spray my clothes with it. Um, very nice. So when you want to, say you wanted to turn an edge over, turn a hem, just a little one like that, and then we'll do it again and make a double hem. Right, then you get a much crisper, much, much crisper finish. It's, a show you, it's hard to show, but this is definitely stiffer than this side. And it makes a, it makes a bit difference. I know Sally Ann Harrison, she always says everything she does, she always best presses it. And because it's not an aerosol, you, you don't actually need much. You just give a quick spritz over your fabric, give it a quick press, and honestly, you will get a better finish. It's much easier to sew fabric together that has a little bit more weight. I mean, if you're using something like a cotton lawn or any of the finer fabrics, it will make a massive difference. But even for quilting weight fabric, it is lovely. Now, if you don't want the aerosol uh, or the smell, get this um, scent free one. This is earth and people friendly as well. I just wonder what it, what it says. Yeah, so it says starch and sizing, no flaking, no residue, no spotting, makes iron easier, relaxes stubborn wrinkles, acid free, guards fabric from soiling. Mm. So it must have some stain resistance in it as well. Or you can buy the best press, lavender and vanilla flavour. And honestly, that, oh, it smel honestly smells amazing. Mm. So a third of the stock of the lavender and vanilla is already gone, but it is lovely. And honestly, you know, just spray it in your room. If you're supposed to be cleaning the house, but you're sewing instead, just have a spray this around your room. Then sit and sew, and everyone, if they come around, will go, oh, have you been cleaning? Yes, yes. Yes, quite a lot. You can do that. Always spray a bit of furniture polish around. People think you've been cleaning. They don't notice the dust is still on. Mm. Well, I would do it with that best press. Smells lovely. Actually, what it would be really nice is if you're ironing your bed linen is to spray it with that first. I know that's not what it's for. But as a gift for somebody. I think it's nice as well, isn't it? I was... um. I was finishing my crochet jumper the other day, which I'm very pleased I've actually finished. And when I blocked my crochet squares, I always um, wet them with a bit of fabric conditioner in as well. And now it just smells amazing. Every time I wear it, because I, I have lavender fabric conditioner, I walk around smelling like a lavender thing. So I can highly recommend that too. The technical term, but it smells so lovely. And oh, that's really nice. Right, what should we do next? So the lavender, we are very low in stock of now. But you can use it for all sorts. I mean, it doesn't, have to be it doesn't have to be used for sewing. It is a starch and sizing alternative. So it, it isn't, hasn't been invented just for sewing. You can use it anyway. Um, sizing is what gives something a bit more um, substance. Substance. So you can use it for ironing. It's used, it, isn't just invent, it isn't invented for sewing. It makes sewing a lot easier. I love the way it says, Mary Ellen makes ironing almost fun. So I think actually it is invented for ironing, not for sewing, but it is perfect for that. But if you were ironing, um, particularly like men's shirts, where you want a, a bit of body to them and that kind of crisp look or maybe they've been on the line too long or in the tumble dryer for too long so they've got a little bit creasy if you give a quick spritz with this or just save it for your sewing up to you but it is um absolutely perfect perfect stuff so the graphics in the moment are for the scent free one and there are only 10 left of the lavender it is lovely though really nice really nice 10 of that one, but more of the scent-free one. I mean, they do exactly the same thing. It's just whether you want the smell or not. No, not the smell, the aroma. It's whether you want the aroma. Okay, which is next? Um, this one. Oh, I like this. This is going to sell out today. Oh... Sunny fields. That's really nice. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, I like that. 
sunflower. That's just gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, that's just, it's well, it's all sunflowers all overlaid together. I love it. So much deep shades of orange and yellows and deep the browns that you get right in the, the colours of the seeds of the sunflowers. You know, when they're just going over a bit and then the seeds start to dry. Brilliant for embroidery as well. And, you know, and because they're all overlaid, some of the sunflowers sit on top. You could cut those out for applique. But that's just really, I mean, be very pretty lining fabric, wouldn't it? It's 7.49 for half a metre. Obviously, if you want more than half a metre, put the extra unit. So you want a metre and a half, put three in your basket. And then it is cut to order. So you can have, have however much you like. But if you want a little bit of splash of sunshine in your life, that's the one. And there is only five metres left. So, yeah, so Hannah and I, we love, we love all of these. So she's chosen it specially so that we can share this one. And then Hannah would like me to make her a cushion. But I'm sorry, Hannah, there are only five metres left in stock. So you won't be able to have a cushion. But it would be. It's really lovely, isn't it? All sorts of different things you can do with it. But nice little splash of sunshine. Can we do the fabric next? Hang on, I've got, my arms aren't that long. One moment. Right, there's only ten of these. Oh, do you know, I've just cut the end of my nail, with I think, with the rotary cutter. No, you know, I've cut it with the rotary cutter or something. Oh, I know, but I've, cut, I've chipped the end of my nail off. I don't know how I've done that, actually. It can't have been with the rotary cutter. I've done it earlier. Now, I've only chipped my nail, not actually cut anything else, but I've got like a crescent shape cut out of it. Oh. Not at the moment. Right, now I'm clean. I'm clean now. I'm clean. Um, this is a bundle that Hannah has created using, called, using a mixture of Liberty and um, Riley Blake. I know that one's Riley Blake, called Summer Party. Oh, isn't it lovely? This one. Oh, that's the wrong one. Okay. So the fabric that's on screen at the moment is what you will get. Yes, yeah, so the one that's the one that's on the bottom right, the blue one isn't doesn't appear to be in my bundle. So the one that's on the screen at the moment, those six fabrics, that's the li uh, Liberty Summer Party are the six Liberty fabrics that you will get in this bundle. So you've got a mixture between yellow, pink, blues, all Liberty fabrics. There are half a metre of each of the fabrics. These are beautiful summer fabrics. Well, you know, I mean, Liberty's always lovely, isn't it? This is a really beautiful delphinium blue. So you've got a little bit of forget-me-not colour, but it makes me think of those delphiniums, those big long flowers, all lovely rich blues with the green background. This is very summer. So if you wanted to make yourself with five half metres, a lot of different quilts you can make with five half metres. They're just so pretty, aren't they? I love that one. Then you've got this really rich, deep pink one, little flowers spotted all over it. That's nice. Then this is like a monochrome one, but with a pink background. So you've got all flowers, but it all goes together really well. They all come from different collections, but the thing is with Liberty, it doesn't matter what collection you take the fabric from, they always go together. And remember, these aren't your sort of traditional Liberty um, lawn fabrics. These are Liberty quilted weight fabrics. So they work for all of that sort of thing. Then we've also got, we've also got the yellow in the same print. It's not yellow, yellow though. Oh, it's a slightly different print. Looks very in a very similar print. It's a really soft buttercup yellow, but it's. I mean, it doesn't. Obviously, I always think of quilts with Liberty, but you don't have to make quilts. There's all different things you can use it for dressmaking, use it for um, homeware items, or you know, if you make things for selling, you make things for charity, and you make little bags and purses and stuff. This is a perfect bundle. The summer house collection, and then that. Then there is also the blue one that's in the bottom right corner that we don't seem to have the right fabric for. But never mind. That's beautiful. Beautiful bundle. If you like Liberty, 
44.49 for five half metres. So that's two and a half metres of fabric. And it makes you realise that the sun, the sun is coming. The, the sun is coming. In fact, they'd make a lovely sun hat, wouldn't they? Little patchwork dress in your Liberty. I love the way that it doesn't matter what collection is, the Liberty fabrics always go together really well. Right, I'll put that fabric back. Scissors, scissors, scissors. These are brilliant, these Fisker scissors. So um, the functional form, which means that they have been designed to make them very ergonomic. They're not actually scissors, just technical term, they're shears. Because shears have one handle bigger than the other. I know it says scissors, but technically shears have one handle bigger than the other. Um, they're really, they're lovely. Now, originally, Fisker scissors always have orange because it's Fisker's orange. In fact, they've trademarked, sorry, I've just got up a little scrap. They've trademarked that orange. It belongs to them. But there is orange around the screw, so it's okay. They are made from... Um, stainless steel really really high quality the screw that's in the center is adjustable so if you're cutting on a thicker fabric and you need to make it a bit um you need to be able to get through it then you can adjust the screw very very slightly um they the handles are designed so they fit nicely into your hand and they cut really well i have used these we did have a pair out which i have used before and they're really nice but they are of a, I mean, I think for $14.99, they're proper dressmaking scissor length. So they're very good for cutting fabric. You're not, they're not your super long shears, but they're very good dressmaker scissors. And they are right-handed. I think actually they're ambidextrous. Oh, they are right-handed. Okay. I thought these were both. No, really, really good. If you need a new pair of scissors, fabric cutting these are the ones because they you know well you can get longer ones and more expensive ones but these are really good we know the heritage behind fiskers in fact they would come from a village in um, finland called fiskers funnily enough and that's where they they first came from but from like the 1649 that's when they first came around so they have got a fantastically long heritage now i've also got the fiskers classic one billion billion so now these are left-handed oh yeah oh oh yes you can you just know immediately it's the way that it the handle slopes because if you if i go with my right hand it feels really uncomfortable but i hold my left hand these are perfect so if you got if you're left-handed these are the scissors for you yeah, that's so strange, isn't it? I'm going to try it with those. So you all, actually, you know then, don't you? Okay, yeah, it feels... Yeah, it's the way that the blades cut. Yeah, because... This is really weird. Yeah, you need the cutting blade to be flat. Yeah. Magic. So those are left-handed. They are a little bit shorter. They have got a 21 centimetre blade. But I mean, ideal for general sewing or you can use them for cutting fabric as well. And then the third one are the prim shears. See, they are shears. These are micro serrated. Now, the good thing about that is that they have a very, very slightly, not pinking shear level, but slight serration on the blades, which means that they grip better. So if you're using something like a jersey or a woven fabric or a scuba or lycra or anything like that, these are ideal. Or if you're using a really lightweight fabric like a cotton lawn or a boiler or a ganza, that very slight serration, which isn't like a pinking shear um, zigzag the just very slight it grips the fabric better and you will get a cleaner cut I mean obviously you can use them for cutting cotton works absolutely perfectly but you will get a cleaner cut when you're using other fabrics like that because that slight serration just grips more tightly onto it so those are 25 centimeters long if you do a lot of fabric cutting dressmaking it is worth investing in you know the equipment that is right for the job there are many tools that we have 
on Sewing Street that are only good for one thing. That sounds really bad, only good for one thing. But what they are made for, they're brilliant at. And it's about having the right tools. So if you know, once you get more experience of sewing and you really get more into it, having the right tools for the job makes a difference. So if you do cut lightweight fabric or you're cutting synthetic fabrics, particularly stretch ones, these micro serration sears, shears are perfect. That's quite a hard word to say. And I've got the embroidery scissors, which are my favorite. Because they're Fiskars and I love Fiskars scissors. They've got the lovely orange handles. And whenever we have yarn lane and I have to choose what goes on, I always put these on because these are the perfect size for knitting and crochet and all sorts of small sewing like embroidery. They're called needlework scissors. Yes, you can cut fabric with them, but the blades are a bit short, so I wouldn't be cutting much. But they have very, very sharp tips. So if you needed to cut, say, buttonholes or, you know, those little slits that you need to cut when you put in... Um, magnetic fasteners that sort of thing they're they're perfect for that they're very very sharp tips but for snipping thread ends keeping next to your sewing machine or putting in your travel sewing kit because you can cut small pieces of fabric with them maybe if you're doing like epp and you just want to cut your hexagons out and you haven't got your big scissors with you but they are i mean fiskars are just quality 13.99 and you know i would say in your sewing kit you need a pair of scissors this size you need a big pair of dressmaking scissors. Now, anything else you have is a real bonus, but these are a must. And they're great for knitting and crochet because um, they will cut through the wool and the yarn and the cotton and the synthetics and all the different things really well. So, love those scissors. I have my own pair. Otherwise, I would want these, but I'd actually have bought my own because I like them. Right, what's next? A black and white. Ooh. Black and white Guterman thread. R obviously, just one of those things. You don't want to be running out of black and white thread. You get four white and three black. $12.99, Guterman thread. It's their sew-all thread, so it's 100% polyester, which means it's super strong, perfect for all different sorts of sewing. You can use it on synthetics, you can use it on cotton, but it is really strong. And you know that Guterman is a quality brand. I think there's 100 metres, yes, on each spool. Really quality brand. And it's just one of those items for 12 night time that's worth popping in your basket because you've got it then, haven't you? You don't, you don't run out because these are the two colours that I'm sure you use more often than anything else. Um, oh, I've also got the Guterman in pastel. Can we do that one next? The spring pastel. So in this, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spools of thread. It's called summer loft, but I think it's more summery, springy, really. But it, yes, it looks, it does more, look more like spring furies. It's a just a really nice selection of threads. So you've got seven, a hundred meters of spools. It's so all thread. I love Gutemann. I think it's really good thread. I like using a polyester thread because it's stronger. And I know a lot of people who sew with cotton fabric say you should use a cotton thread. And yes, it is nice to match the two together because the cotton with the cotton, but the polyester is stronger. It doesn't snap the same. If you're using it in the sewing machine, it won't snap as much. Maybe that's your problem, Hannah. Maybe you've got the wrong thread. Um, <laughs> um, it's really good for home sew, hand sewing, because it's it's stronger. It's just a really, what well, it's called, they call it the sew all thread. It is a really good sew all thread. And it's it's an iconic brand. It's been going, around, going for years. <laughs> so there are 100 meters in each spool. And in this you get mm, like, I would say it's not bright, bright white, more of an ivory. And when you I dark pink and light pink, but they are very soft pinks, even the dark one. You've got two shades of blue and two of green and all very soft, springy shades. So if you're sewing any pastel fabrics, these are perfect. And I think it's really nice that you get the, the different shades, very similar, but sometimes you do need that. So if you're stitching something and you want to maybe put a bit of a top stitch, to add a little bit more decorations, it's nice to have the choice between the dark and the light. In fact, if you had a twin needle, they'd look really nice together. Now that we're all big twin needle fans, realise the joy, wouldn't it be nice to twin needle with a pink and a blue? 
It'd be really nice, wouldn't it? So that's the other one. <coughs> yeah. If only once we could show you some twin needling. Mm. I've got loads of thread. What else are we, what are we going to do next, Hannah? That one. Right. So again, still on Gutterman, still on soil thread, because I love it. 100 metre spools, exactly the same thread that we had in the other packs. But these are really like vibrant. These are sunset colours. Is it called sunset? It should be. I don't even think it's got a name. But it should be called sunset. You know when you think of those paintings of African sunsets with the giraffe going across? Those are all the colours. And that's the giraffe. So these are work out £1.49 a spool. It's the sole thread, 100% polyester. So the more thread that you get in the pack, the better value it is. Um, obviously, you use them on your bobbin, you use them on the top, you use them for all different sorts of um, fabrics as well. Just perfect. But I love the colours, aren't they? Really rich sunset colours, all like peonies. But very good for depo for top stitching as well. So if you're sewing something and you want to add a bit of extra in it, what's quite nice is that you get all of these shades. So say you're sewing the seam in this pink, you could use that pink for the top stitching. So it's lovely to have a collection of threads that are that are of the same tonal range. But if you're stitching maybe a yellow fabric, that you know that all of the colours in this range go together also really helps when you're choosing fabrics to see which ones go so you could just go through your plain fabrics and go oh yes that color obviously goes with that color because someone else has chosen it so that's a really nice set of threads put that back so same size pack but different colors this is your blues and greens so this is this is a hundred percent i was just going to say this isn't your so all this is the pure cotton thread. You can tell the difference because they have a different colour end on the spool. So, same price point. So, some people prefer, because it makes more sense, doesn't it? You sew with cotton thread on cotton fabric. I like the polyester thread, it's stronger. But it feels very different. It looks different to polyester thread. Um, and if you want that traditional sewing with cotton fabric on cotton threads, then they age the same at the same time so the sort of the threads and the fabric will age together and sometimes that's quite important if you if you're making a quilt that you think is going to be vintage and kept forever it's nice to match them they also cotton threads has a slightly different look to it slightly more matte so in here you've got a lovely mixture of blues going from midnight to french blue royal blue pale blue and light blue and then you've got the same tones but in green really dark emerald jade green and this is the same price point per spool as the polyester thread so there's a lovely selection so if you've not tried sewing with cotton threads and you've only been using polyester threads, i think as your sewing journey goes on you go through different levels and qualities and you might start off with a cheap one pound a spool thread for a thousand meters and as you go on, you realise mm, actually the better the quality thread, the better finish you get. Some projects you will still all use use the you know more le inexpensive threads because you're doing lots of seams. It does depend. It's not that well you should only ever use the top quality thread. It depends what you're doing. And you know have a go if you haven't tried using cotton thread before. This is a really good way to start and see what you think about it. It does so slightly different. It does feel different, and it has a slightly different finish to it. But it, it is lovely to sew with. So it's, it's a nice, to, you could start with that little pack. Um, which one next? A big pack with a tape measure in. Oh. Right, I'm looking for the big pack with the tape. Ah, right, I found that one. Oh, this is rainbow. Super rainbow. This is great value. That's because it's called value pack. Seven. <laughs> Seventeen ninety nine for ten spools of thread and a tape measure. I like the tape measure. It's all got different colours on it. This is rainbow, isn't it? So you've got black and 
white, so that's your basic thread, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet and pink. And a very, very nice tape measure as well, with all different colours on it. Really nice um, pack for somebody. Maybe you know someone who's starting sewing, wants it as a gift. Maybe you know someone like yourself who'd like it as the gift. You can just buy it for yourself. Self-gifting is the new thing. But you just need to get someone else to pay for it. That's all. But it's, um, it is the, the Sew All 100% polyester thread. I'm just trying to see how long the tape measure is, but it doesn't say. I'd imagine it's a metre and a half because it normally are. But that's just lovely. So you're doing any rain if you've got any rainbow packs and you don't want to go and try and choose all the different colours, that's perfect. Or maybe you want to do some rainbow quilting. So you've got a white fabric or a black fabric and you want to quilt or machine embroider all the colours of the rainbow. There they are without having to think about it, all in there. They're nice. Um, next pack. The bobbiny bits. This one. So these are really useful. Can I open it? No, it's all sealed up. What you do, I'll just show you the photo. So when you've wound your bobbin with the thread, you take the red clip, you push it through the bobbin and into the top of the spool of thread and it holds the bobbin with the thread. So you can then actually put these spools, well, you can put them in a box like that, leave them, so, but also, you know, the thread spool holders and stories that you get that have just little spikes and you stick them all up on them you could put them on there then whenever you come to use your thread you know you've got a spool it actually saves a lot of thread because quite often you'll like think oh i, oh, I don't know how much i've got on that you'll, you'll unwind one because you want to use it for something else so it's worth actually buying and we do sell them on the website oh, look, I've got something actually. I'm gonna say it's worth buying it is worth buying more plastic bobbins because I've never got enough of them and I actually waste thread. It is better, I mean, it is better. There are multi purpose bobbins. Do check th that the bobbins will fit your machine. Janome is and Elna are the same thing. But I waste a lot of thread where I think, oh, I need a bit of thread. Oh, and I haven't got a spare one. And I take thread off to put some more on. But actually, I should get some of these because if you keep the bobbin with the thread, you know you've always got it. And also, you know when you need to change the thread in your machine and you know you really ought to because you're sewing something green and you've got pink thread in but you can't be bothered. If you've got the bobbin already wound, it's not quite the same. So it's worth buying more bobbins because you waste less thread and then the little clips. But that's lovely. That's a really nice um, spring, summer colourway. Turquoise, green, lemon, yellow, orange, wine, red, pink, pale pink and white. White. Right. This pack here, it's value, value. Um, this has got hand sewing needles and machine needles, but you know, they're not they're not just any, they're not sort of like just free gift needles. These are proper prim sewing needles, Schmetz hand, uh, machine sewing needles, both of which are really, really good brands. So they're not your cracker needles or your free gift. Um, the Schmetz ones are universal from size 70 to 90. So perfect for lightweight sewing up to jean sewing. They're universal. So you, they've Universal have a very, very slightly rounded point, so you can use them for cotton, but you can also use them for stretch fabrics. Obviously, there are more specific sewing machine needles, but Universal are good for most things. And then in the needle assortment, they're made by Prim. You have got all different sizes and types of needles in there, which I'm just trying to see whether it says what they are. Um, so you've got sewing, embroidery and darning needles in there and five universal so me so they are all good they're not free gifts they're like proper products and then you've got 10 reels spools of thread in just kind of well almost rainbow colors but more like the colors that you'll use the most so white and black navy greens blues reds oranges and yellows the problem is you've got to choose now the next one is Hannah's favourite. So you've got a lovely, you've got a lovely big pack of Schmetz Universal needles going from seventy to ninety, or that's ten to fourteen. That's a really good pack. 
and and it's lovely because you've got the 90s which are perfect for sewing on denim the 70s which are for the slightly lighter weight and the 80s in the middle which are for normal cotton fabric you've got some lovely prim pins and they come in a pin pot, but these are proper branded. They're not free gifts. And then you get the 10 reels of thread. So the difficulty may be choosing which pack to buy. Because, I mean, they're 19 99 for 10 spools. No, 12. 12? 12? 19 for 12. And then you get the whole pack of machine needles. 10. With 10 needles. So the spools work out at £1.66. And then they're not, well, they're obviously not free gifts the other bits because, you know, these are like Schmetz and Prim. So the spools must be coming down to about £1.40. So that's an absolute bargain. So you need to choose which one or have all of them if you can't decide. Very difficult. I do like to have the um, needles, but I like those bobbin holders, but then I'd need some extra bobbins as well. So a bit difficult, but you have got a really good choice of needles here. Needles and thread and everything. They are lovely packs, actually. I love Guterman thread, be just because it's quality. And you know, when someone goes, oh, is it the thread you've got on your machine? No, I know my, I know my machine thread is fine. Like I said with Hannah when I was questioning why her thread kept breaking. But I, th I do think it's her needle. She need a pack of these, Hannah, because then you could try another needle, couldn't you? You could. <laughs> um, what should we do? Oh, well, we haven't got long left, have we? What should we do next? Yeah, I like these. But, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. I've split my rotating cutting mat. Right, it came apart. This, these are brilliant rotating. I mean, it's nice to have a big, I don't know what it's got on it. It's nice to have a big cutting mat so that when you're cutting fabric, you can cut across the, f the full width of the fabric folded in half. But if you're using a cutting mat for smaller things, like when you're making half square triangles and you're trimming them. So once you've made them, you then need to open them out flat and trim them to shape. And you have to trim them each along each side and then round. And you, because you should never cut towards yourself or across, you should always cut away. You need to then, if you've got your fabric on there, you can just turn it around. You can do it like that. Or if you just want a small mat, maybe you're cutting um, FPP, where you need to be cutting in different directions. And I know sometimes to save time, we sort of, well, I do, you cut that way with your rotary cutter. You really shouldn't do that. But with a rotating mat, you can do it. Or if you don't, if you're cutting something very specific size and you don't want to move it because once it's moved, you won't be able to cut the other angle. Quite often what I will do, well, I've got a rotating mat now when I didn't have one. I'd go around the other side of the table to do it, and that takes ages. So these rotating mats are a really nice size because you want a smaller one for cutting little things, but also the fact it rotates is lovely. It's also got um, all the angles marked on it. So you've got 60, 45, and 30 degree angles, but you've also got um, different diameter circles on there as well, which is very useful. So when you're cut, if you may be cutting out circular shapes, you know, when it says draw around a 10 inch dinner plate, so you have to go measure all of your dinner plates. This um, has got 10 inches on it already. So it's got those diameter circles, but it's just so it's very useful. If you're doing anything like trimming smaller pieces of fabric or you're doing FPP, this is perfect. Right, I'm gonna go through Right, we've only got two left of these. And I don't think we're going to get any more. So this is the Janet Clare, who is a genius in design and colour choice and particularly good at blue. Particularly good at blue. It's called the Blues and it has a nod to, it's obviously blue, to blues music. So you get 26, 26 fat quarters of blue fabrics in shades of 
very inky blue. I'm trying to remember the name of her fabric range that had all the whales on it and the sea things. Oh, I'll think of it a minute. It was a few years ago and it wasn't called blue whales. So you get the inky blue and I'm sorting out all the fabrics now. And then you go down to a denim blue. So each of the prints come in all of these different colours, but they are all lovely shades of blue. There's another one. And then you move down to the chambray colours. There's those. Then you have the ones that are cream, but with a darker blue mix. So you know there's loads and loads of different books and patterns that you can um, you can buy and have to using fat quarters of fabric. But by buying this, if you like blue, and I know whenever we sell quilt kits or, off, or all sorts of things, whether they're bag kits, it's always the blue colourway that goes the, the best. So if you like blue, for 99.99, remember now since our birthday, split pay, applies to thing items over 99.99 so you can buy this on two equal payments of 49.99 it's interest free so you just pay half now and half in a month's time and then you can take it away and it's yours it's yours but you get it straight away you haven't got to wait for the second month but you'll just be charged then you've got these lovely chom really light chambray blues gorgeous aren't they look at this one look at the stripes on that one that's lovely. It's like it's like the ocean. And also it has cream. Finally, it has the creams on top. But they're the cream that goes with these blues. That is a beautiful collection of fabric. Look at that. Whoa, gosh, the last four hours have flown by. So tomorrow, that's it for Sewing Street. Obviously, Yarn Lane is coming up in just five minutes' time. Um, I'm just going to run through what's coming up tomorrow. So on Sewing Street tomorrow, 8 o'clock, we've got floral fabrics. That's because spring is on its way. 9 o'clock, we've got Easter extravaganza with Alice and Marion. I think that must be something to do with Easter eggs. 10 o'clock, Easter fabrics. 11 o'clock, we've got Alison back on with the table runner and kitchen tidy box. And 12 o'clock, primal living with Poppy Hadkinson. Mm, be interesting. She's what? Zooming in. Mm. Oh, that'll be nice, zooming in. Um, but coming up on Yarn Lane, we have got Louise from Sincerely Louisa, which I'm very, very excited about because I wanted to meet her for a long time and she is makes the most fantastic designs, these animal he heads. She does lots of animal head kits and she has designed a sheep to go with her whole animal collection and she is launching that on air with us today. Now, if you're on the TV, watching me on TV, don't go anywhere. We'll just turn over to Yarn Lane. You don't have to do anything. If you're watching me online or on Facebook, you need to move over to www.yarnlane.com and then you can watch us there. Now, if you like knitting and you want to see something a little bit different, you are going to love this. She's got a lot of kits to show us and she's going to go through the whole thing. And she's also, she's been talking about this on Instagram for a couple of weeks. She's asked people for suggestions for the name of her sheep and she's going to announce it on air. So I've got a couple of kits of hers already. You will love her stuff. And it's really nice to see a young, talented knitwear designer, you know, set up her own business and really make a go of it. And it is beautiful. And the kits that she's got have everything, absolutely everything, even the needles. So I will see you back here in a few minutes time and we'll welcome Louise and see all of her animal heads. <laughs>